live from Hollywood, California, BJ Vernon Husky, the Big Vanilla Funnies, unsportsmanlike conduct. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all already know. Y'all know. Y'all know. Y'all know that joint right there. I like. I don't care who sings it. That's why it's the instrumental. I don't care about the lyrics. That beat uh, knocks. Uh, knocks. Uh, no, what's good, everybody out there, man? Good morning. Top of the world. Top of the day. God woke us all up this morning, man, so y'all can tune in to listen to VJs on Sports with Like Conduct and do great things in your life that you all gonna go out and do. I believe that. I'm just a positive dude. I just believe when you wake up in the morning, everybody I know, everybody in my circle, everybody that I care about is gonna go out and do great things today, man. So I wanna welcome you guys right now to VJs on Sports with Like Conduct. I'm your host. Y'all already know who it is. VJ Vernon Husky, a.k.a. the Big Vanilla Funny, a.k.a. VJ Right, because he always thinks he is. Mr. 8515, the Big Vanilla Shack, v- VA's top talk boy, Mr. Never Shut Up, Mr. Talk Too Much, Mr. Always Think You Know What He's Talking About, Mr. Talk About The NBA's Rig. Y'all know what the names, what the nicknames are. I don't have, to, I don't have to go through the nicknames. Listen to me, man. I got a dope show for you guys lined up today. I got some heavy hitters. I got some Nick fans. I got some TV producers. I got two CEOs. I got somebody that scouts NBA talent for a living and gets a paycheck for it. So it's not just an internet or social media voice. I got somebody coming in that is a diehard Nick fan. That is a former TV producer. He is a current. Music, uh, uh, music rap artist right now. He is one of my good friends, used to work for the mouse. He is a huge Nick fan. He is a basketball aficionado. My man Yao Deans will be in the building a little later. Also, too, CEO of Snap Judgment Entertainment and also trains kids in the ATL. Another big New Yorker and New York Nick fan. Will be in also my man Jermaine Snap Thurston. And then last but not least, I'm going to bring some real high level, high intensity professionalism NBA wise here. I will have Mr. Tom Perkins on who runs a basketball website, who is a trainer of the pre-draft kids when they first come out of college. He's one of the main scouts, one of the main trainers of the NBA. We'll have him on in about an hour, maybe about 45 minutes to an hour after I get through my opening rant and after I finish talking to my first opening guest and we'll We'll take it all from there. We'll talk about the NBA draft lottery. We'll talk about my man Steph Curry, the vanilla bruh. Him and my man, mama name him Clay. I'm going to call him Clay. Mama call him Clay. I'm going to call him Clay. I'm going to talk about the game when they had against the Portland Trailblazers in the 2019 Western Conference Finals with a trip on the line to go to the NBA Finals and play for the NBA Championship. We'll get into all of that today. We'll also talk about in preview today's game between the Claw and the Freak. That's all this is. This ain't the Bucks and the Raptors. This is the Claw and the Freak. I don't know what I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why I did that right there, but it just fits Freak. The Claw and the Freak. We'll talk about that matchup in the Eastern Conference Finals of the 2019 NBA Playoffs with a chance to advance and go on to meet whoever comes out of the Western Conference. I want to start my show and start the opening rant today talking about the Golden State Warriors and Steph Curry. I want to talk about how so many times in sports we ask for certain things and when we get them, we don't want them. It's just like in life. In life, we ask for the truth. Your woman in your relationship, tell me the truth. Just be truthful to me. Don't lie to me. Tell me the truth. But then you ask us if you don't look a certain way or look a certain way in a certain outfit. Namely, the three-letter word, F-A-A-T. I just don't want to say it because I don't want to offend anybody. But you ask us, do I look? We can't say yeah. Are you kidding me? You can't say yeah, even though you look a little plump. You look a little rotund right now. You've been stopping and getting donuts, you know what I'm saying, on your lunch break at work. We have fried chicken, tacos, and we went out to dinner all in one week. And we ain't been to the gym in two weeks. Both of us might be looking a little marshmallowy around here. 
I don't ask you, do I look thick in this suit jacket? I know I look thick in the suit jacket because I had to suck in a little more the button to button on the suit jacket that I normally only got to suck in a little bit, but I had to suck in a little more today to button the suit jacket. I'm not going to ask my woman the truth. Do I look like a half-busted can of biscuits in this suit jacket? I probably look like a half-busted can of biscuits. I'm already, I'm already yellow. I'm already vanilla. I already look like some dough with the little butter spread on it to come out the can. And I'm going to ask that question. I already know the answer. So a lot of times in life, we say we want certain things. But when we get them, we don't like them. And when it comes to sports, we love the superstar, but we hate the superstar. I'm guilty of it too. I'm guilty of it too. There are times we love the superstar and we hate the superstar. There are times we love the player that takes a back seat. And we don't like when the player takes a back seat. I love the fact that Steph Curry decided to take a back seat to Durant and say, you know what? You can go ahead and lead. I'm going to just cop rings. No one's ever going to mention me with the goats anyway. I'm already the best shooter any of you have ever seen. And I bring other things to the game. I have a great outside life. I come from NBA DNA. My dad was one of the greatest shooters. My mom is still fine as hell. My brother's in the league. My sister plays D1 college sports. He's got a strong faith in God and church and Jesus or whatever. And, and, and that's, that's all self-preference, whatever. But he's looking at his life probably saying, you know what? Maybe I don't have to be the man. Kevin Durant, you needed a little more. Yeah, we need you too, but you need us more. You need the spotlight more. You need to hit the jumper on LeBron in back-to-back finals to cap off games five and game six. But you need it more. You don't need it. I don't need it as much as you do because I'm not in that discussion. And some people are fine with it. But then you got guys like me who look at a superstar like LeBron who will pass to a teammate. I don't like it. I'm guilty of it too. We all like and love the same thing. What they say will well, we'll make you cry or kill you or make you laugh or we'll make you cry or we'll make you cry or we'll make you laugh or will kill you or we'll make you laugh. Y'all know what I'm saying. Y'all know what I'm getting at. But you have the Golden State Warriors. You have a player like Steph Curry. Doesn't really do anything wrong. We haven't heard about his name in the press. Seems to be a great father. Seems to be a great husband. Takes one for the team. Will take the back seat. Will take all the criticism. Even his wife is being criticized. He will take all of that just so I can have a team around me and I can win. I don't want to have to battle through uh, 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 being on bad teams for long. I had to do that when I first came into the league. I'm done with that. I win championships now. So I want to continue to win championships because at the end of the day, we could throw all the variables in. We could put all the BS in there. We could talk about who played with who and who didn't play with who and who had a great coach and who didn't have a great coach, who had a great receiver, who had a great defense. We could talk about all these variables, but at the end of the day, did you win? Did you win? Did you just get to a bunch of championships? Did you get to a bunch of playoffs? Or do you have a bunch of rings across your fingers? That's how it's always been since I've been watching sports and boxing. You could talk about a guy being the best ever, but does he have Ali's championships? Did he win the heavyweight title as young as Tyson did? Did he have the championships that Tyson has? Does he have the undefeated record of Floyd Mayweather? Does he have the battle-tested fights, eight, nine, ten fights in a row of a Hagler or Hearns or Leonard or Duran or Sweet Pea or Parnell Whitaker? Sweet Pea, Parnell, same person. Sorry. I meant to say Felix, Felix Tito Trinidad. That's what it is at the end of the day. It's championships. Wayne Gretzky, why? Look at all the Stanley Cups. Tiger Woods, Jack Nicholson, why? Look at all the majors. Serena, why? Look at all the Grand Slams. Federer, why? Nadal, why? Look around. It's in every sport. Jordan, why? Kobe, why? Shaq, why? LeBron, why? Bill Russell, why? Championships, yeah, there's numbers. Yeah, there's defeats. There's wins. There's situations, there's variables, there's teammates, there's coaches, there's injuries. I know that. But at the end of the damn day, who was winning? So I don't mind when we have somebody that wants to take a back step and say, long as we still win, I'm cool. I can take all of this. I'm built for this. This is fine with me. I've been doing this. I grew up in the NBA. This is nothing new to me. 
And you have a guy like Steph Curry who reminds us in the second half of game six and last night just that fast how lethal I am. You could talk about the uh, Portland Trailblazers sinking back on the picker. Okay, he could also have missed them shots. Houston played him tough. Houston was allowed to grab, hold. They were getting physical with him. No, he's not a big guy. He's a smaller stature guy. I get it. But every team can't do that. They run into a Houston, and that's really about it. There's not another team in the league that employs the type of defense that can make Steph have all these people start to say these crazy things that he's not that good and he's overrated and just all the other crazy crap that I hear when it comes to uh, Steph having a bad game. I don't think he's hurt just because he's like, no, he's being played aggressively against. There are there There is a, a pocket of people who do make excuses for Steph. I try not to be that guy. No, he's not hurt. You dislocated the finger on the left hand. I get that. But at the same time, that's not the hand you shoot with. And when you was ready to get busy, you gave him 33 in the second half with that dislocated finger on the left hand. So I don't want to hear that excuse. And I never made that excuse for him. He's shooting bad. Ray Allen is shot bad. Reggie Miller has shot bad. Kobe has gone cold. Guys, Jordan's gone cold. Guys that have these scoring runs in their career, there are times when they just go cold. It happens. It's not always an excuse. It's not always a reason. It just happens. But don't let that fool you into thinking that they're still not that guy. Steph is still that guy. Steph is still one of the best point guards we've ever seen. He's a top 10 point guard of all time right now. I did a top 10 list the other day, and I'm just happened to be sitting here in the Vanilla Sports Talk back game, and I'm looking at the list right here. The papers were left up here from the other day. I had Magic, John Stockton, Iverson, Big O, Steph Curry, Zeke, Isaiah Thomas, a.k.a. Isaiah Thomas, Nash, Kuzi, and Jason Kidd. That was my top 10. Steph Curry's in the top 10 right now. Right now, if you look at his numbers, career. He's 25, 5, and 5. Ironically, the same career numbers of Kobe Bryant, who some people want to put in the GOAT conversation, including myself. Including myself, I put Kobe in the GOAT conversation. It's just my opinion about it. it. The GOAT is still Jordan or Kareem, but if we're going to talk about it and we're going to all put some chips in for our guy, I think I'm one of the right people of a Kobe base and a Kobe fan who can push his chips in for Kobe. I'm not irrational about it. I didn't like Colorado. Colorado was lame. Man to man, that was lame. But as men, we all do some lame shit. Everybody does. Doesn't mean I can't still like your skill on the court. I can't still like your killer instinct, your mamba mentality, everything you stand for as far as the basketball part goes. That doesn't mean I can't still like that and still cheer for that because you made a mistake. Just the way it goes. Let's be real. Let's keep it 100. Everybody's got a friend that you would look at and go, damn, dog. Ugh, ugh. Damn, dog, you did that. Oh, man, come on, bro. He ain't doing it to me, but damn, bro. It's like I associate with you. You know, you're my homie, man. You're my boy. Mm. You don't stop being friends unless he does it to you. I mean, that's like, look, that's just me. And I think women, in, in a sense, are the same way. But he's not going to be in the GOAT conversation. He's 25, 5, and 5, but somebody else is 25, 5, 5 is in the GOAT conversation. 92% from the free throw line, 45% career from the three point line. That, that's, that's crazy. 92 from the free throw, 45 from the three, and 47 overall. I'm going to shoot 50% as a point guard. Five-time All-NBA, two-time MVP, one unanimous, led the league in steals one year, six-time All-Star, and he was a scoring champ. Led the league in scoring. He's done everything you ask and that we ask a basketball player to do for us to talk you up and for us to, to, to uh, you know, to rip and rant about you, whether we like you or, you, or, you, or we don't. But we all do things and we all support things that we love and that we hate. And superstar athletes, especially in the NBA, is one of those things. This is a guy who does what we say we want people to do. We don't like the ego. We don't like the overpowering personality sometimes with certain athletes and, and uh, um, you know certain celebrities. But there, there's somebody you like that does the same kind of things they do. And you like them. But you don't like this one person. They're the same person. They're the same personality traits. They do the same thing, especially now with social media out there. I went in on Joel and B because he was crying online. But at the same time, you also troll a lot of people. You run your mouth. You talk a lot of trash. So guys like me are going to see you crying like that. You should have said that for the locker room, bro. Sorry. You can tear up. I get it, man. Maybe a little bit of this, but that brother. He was doing the cry like he was silent for a minute. You remember when you used to cry? And you'd be like, ah. Ah. Like he was crying. 
<laughs> like that. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting on that. Because you troll a lot of people, man. You run your mouth a lot. Like you getting a beef with Jared Dudley. Jared, who? Great players, great superstars. They don't even bother with those type of guys. Like Jared Dudley. You think LeBron, I'm not a LeBron guy, but you think LeBron would get into a back and forth with Jared Dudley? Didn't Jared Dudley try a back and forth with LeBron? And LeBron was kind of (coughs) like, excuse me, but like, uh, yeah, okay, buddy. Okay, buddy. Okay, buddy. Come on, this way. Okay, buddy. Watch it. Don't touch, buddy. Okay, listen. Holy moly donut shop, right? (laughs) Like, like I'm not even paying attention to you. Don't touch me. Like, holy moly, Mr. Moly. But we ask for these things in sports, and when we get it, and you look at Golden State, you got Durant out right now, and all they've done is said, okay, we, we're going to go back to what y'all said we couldn't do with the team that we have, no Boogie and no Kevin Durant. Watch what we do. We're going to go on the road. We're going to beat the team that supposedly should have beaten us last year if Chris Paul didn't get hurt. Chris Paul wasn't hurt this year, and they lost in six. Destroyed. Picked apart. Bad officiated series on both sides, but at the end of the day, you lost game six at home, and they didn't have their best player, who many think is their best player. Durant, to me, is their best scorer. Steph Curry, to me, is still their best player. It's still his team, and it'll be shown if Kevin Durant foolishly leaves this summer, which we have plenty of time to talk about. I don't think I'm going to get to that much, but when I bring in my boy Yao, my boy Snap, I do think they're going to get into it because they're both Nick fans. But just to get to clear up everything and, and about Steph and about Clay, just stop it, guys. You say you like teams that play as a team, and whoever's got the hot hand, you get them the ball. It's not a ball hog situation. We hate ball hogs. People didn't like Kobe because people said Kobe was a ball hog. I knew people didn't like Iverson because Iverson's a ball hog. People didn't like Jordan when he was young because Jordan was a ball. All right, you don't like ball hogs. Here's a team that shares the wealth. And then when they notice that a top notch score and an all time great score wants to come to your team, yeah, come on over here, dog. Come on over here. We're still going to get ours. We're not going to miss no all-star games. We're not going to miss no checks. We're not going to miss no max contracts. We're not going to miss no endorsements because you here. But come on over here. You need us. We got rings. And we're going to keep going. Without you, we're still going to get to the finals. I mean, like wasn't LeBron judged on eight finals appearances in a row? The Warriors are looking like they're about to pull off five, six, seven of themselves in a row. They may not win them all, but they're going to the finals. You only been once when you was young, and you let LeBron and Dwayne Wade punk y'all. And it made you trade Harden, and it made you pay Ibaka, overpay Ibaka, who was a shot blocker, who turned into a three-point shooter, an average one at that. That's what we did. That's, that's what happened to you when you were young and you got to the finals. We get to the finals, and we hanging up banners. And we building something. And everybody hates us, and everybody wants to come here. Whether people want to admit or not, everybody wants to go play with Golden State. It's just like, well, remember when everybody wanted to go play with Dallas or the Niners? It would be the Patriots if the Patriots were perceived to be a more fun team to be on and you could be personable, uh, you could have your personality and you could really wild out like, like athletes like to do. Like in Odell, he would, he would never, in my opinion, he would never work there. And AB would never work there. Julio Jones would. AJ Green would. They'd work perfect there. They're quiet kind of guys now. But Dallas and, and, Jay and Jimmy Johnson, Jimmy Johnson used to let guys have fun and beat themselves. Everybody was a free agent. They were trying to get to Dallas. George Seifert, Bill Walsh, they kind of let guys have fun and beat themselves, especially when Seifert took over. Guys wanted to go there. They wanted to play for the Niners. They were winning. They were the best team. They wanted to go be part of that. Right now, that's the Warriors in our sport. It used to be the Yankees. You had to keep the beard cut and you had to cut the facial hair and stuff. That was George's thing. That was Papa George's thing. But at the end of the day, too, Papa George would always just be like, hey, just go, just go win. Al Davis, just go win. Just win. Cut the facial hair. You guys could kind of, you know, it's New York. They're going to get to you anyway. I can't keep New York off of you. It's up to you how smart you want to be with it. I.e., Derek Jeter. Very smart with it. Derek had a fulfilling life. I know he did. I, I know Derek Jeter did. I know Derek Jeter had a fulfilling playing days in his career. But he knew how to keep New York kind of out of his business and off of him. And it was really before social media hit. So there's probably a lot that we probably would have saw then that we don't now because he's retired. And then we didn't have social media. So let's get back to saying what we want. If we really do want to see a team team, 
I know we don't like this super team round, but they have two superstars or two all stars out right now, and they're and they're playing like they were a few years ago. And it's so called non bench that they don't have. No, they were just they had to play these guys the way they were playing them. If Durant goes, of course you have to import more bench players. But when Durant is averaging thirty four, and when Durant is going, got it going and and hot. Like sorry, Cook. Sorry, Bogut. Sorry, Jarebko. You got to kind of chill. These guys got it going right now. We don't really need you right. But when we call on you, i.e. game six, you need to be ready. And Steph, when we need you to close it, and it's really on you to close it, game six, can you close it for me? I give you 33, coach. I give you 33, Oakland. Here you go. Bay Area. Y'all forgot? Crazy, man. Craziness. Now. Bringing on my guest here in about two minutes. I'm going to have my guest on here in about two minutes. I want to talk about the Knicks. And I'm going to shoot a text over to both of them and have them uh, actually call in to the line right now so we can link them two up. Uh, my boy Snap and also a really good friend of mine, Yao D's out of New York, two avid New York Knicks fans of uh, sports aficionados. Both these guys know their stuff. I respect their opinions. I've talked hundreds and hundreds of hours of sports on so many different levels with both of these gentlemen. I believe they both, if they decided to do sports talk, they would be just fine in the industry of sports talk. I believe that uh, these are the two best Nick fans that I can find to bring on today. So, uh, you know what we'll do actually first? I will, uh, I'll actually take a quick break. We'll take a quick break first. I'll put you guys on with our, our one of our new kind of, uh, many sponsors. My man Jason Hadley is a comedian and he does this Jason Hadley Hollywood uh, wrap up type of thing that he does. And uh, he, email, he emails it to me and I, I listen to him. He posts them all the time, but he emails them directly to me. I like them a lot. I think you guys will like them too. So what I will do is we'll take a quick break. I'll bring you guys on. You'll listen to the Rocket Wrap Up with Jason Hadley. I'll bring in my guests and we will talk New York Nick. And I'll let you guys uh, know where I completely stand on the New York Knicks, the future of the Knicks, and what I think the NBA draft really just set up and really did right under everybody. And it's not under everybody knows because there's some people out there that do see it. There's some people that just don't. And that's fine. That made me smarter than you. That made me any better than you or anything of that nature. But I just, I kind of got, I got my goggles on. You know what I'm saying? You see how I wear the specs. I got my goggles on. I can see it. And I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm not really even mad at it. It's more comical to me because I like being more right than being mad. I'm just not a mad guy. I'm not a mad person. That's just really not my personality to be mad. So I, I, I find humor in it. I really do. And I see what the league is doing. And I'm not attached to any league or anything, so I can say it. And, and some of my guests can't, so I'll keep it away from them. But I'm going to let y'all know what the NBA just really did, man. What the NBA just really did. And nobody sees it. Nobody caught it, man. But, you know, that's saying, hey, you know, like I said, listen, it is what it is. As my dad would say, and uh, <laughs> what they say, that's it, that's that, and this is it, and this is that. I, I, just say, I don't know. Anyway, man, all that and more coming up. VJ's on Sports with Icon, no, Spreaker.com. Yeah, it's the Hollywood Rock and Wrap Up with your host, Jason Hadley. Previously jailed for child support issues, R. Kelly has found the money. to now be two full months ahead on his payments or what R. Kelly's calling investing in his children's futures Hollywood's mourning the loss of comedian Tim Conway who passed away at the age of 85 a career spanning decades before social media many of our younger listeners may have to look him up but let's just say he was what they would call telegram famous Kylie Jenner's looking to cash in on her new mom status with a new line of baby clothes, furniture, and accessories. In case any of you out there are wondering if she does discreet shipping, I've been assured it will always be covered in a wrapper. Hey, just like Kylie Jenner. hi And that's the Hollywood Rock and Wrap Up. Follow us on Twitter at Rock and Wrap Up. Rock and Wrap Up, my man Jason Henley. Good stuff, man. I just like to try to help my friends out and help guys up. And I uh, help guys out and put them on. So I thought it would be really cool to have him on there. So let me hit my guys up. Let me hit my guys up now. And I will have them call in. And uh, and we'll get this and we'll get this party started. I'm going to actually have uh, both of them on at the same time. 
and then we'll go from there. Sorry for the pausing in my voice and things of that nature. You guys excuse me, but you guys know how it is, man. I'm trying to do a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> trying to do a lot of things at once here. Uh, I'll go to the um, chat room real quick. My man Louis Estrada, who is listening. I always appreciate my man Louis Estrada over there at Spectrum Sports. A uh, real good friend of mine has his own uh, Luis Estrada Sports House over on blogtalkradio.com. He is another uh, really good friend of mine. And he's in the uh, chat room right now. And he says, Harden and Paul are overrated. No heart in clutch time. I don't know about overrated. I'm not going to go with uh, with uh, overrated. But I, I've never been sold on Chris Paul. I don't like dirty players. And I don't like guys who circumvent the game. And I felt like that's what Chris Paul has always done. Harden does it too. But at least Harden can average 36 while doing it. And can actually get his team to conference finals while doing it. Chris Paul could barely get out of the first round. And could never get out of the second round. Even with home court advantage. Um, even with home court advantage at times. So uh, that's the way I feel about both of them. But right now, um, I'm going to bring on my guests. All right, now listen, guys. These two gentlemen aren't just, you know, guys on the Internet. They aren't just guys that, uh, you know, I go back and forth with. These are two gentlemen, two, two brothers, two African-American, two black men who I respect their sports opinion a lot. Um I know both of them, one through my wife and the Mouse Network, the other one I played high school football with. I've talked hundreds of hours, as I told you guys earlier in the show, with both of these gentlemen about sports. They both know their thing, and they both are probably two of the biggest and most irrational Nick fans that I know. And that's hard to beat and say, because I got family in Jersey, and I got family in, uh, in New York. So I got family in that area, and I don't even know if I know two other people. Who love the Knickerbockers. And I like to call them the Knickerbockers. And I've told one of these gentlemen before. The NBA is better when the Lakers, when the Celtics, and when the Knickerbockers are all good. It's like football. When Dallas is good, the league is better. In baseball, when the Yankees are good, when the Cardinals and the Dodgers are good, when the Cubbies are good, baseball is better to watch. When Tigers on the 18th. Going for a green jacket, it's better to watch golf. When Serena's in the finals, when the Dolls in the finals, when Chelsea is in the finals, when Barcelona or Real Madrid, when the stars are on the stage, it's the best. When the teams are at that level, it's the best. I've never had a Nick hate bone in my life. I love Patrick Ewan. I love John Starks. I used I love the organ with the defense chant in the background. There's nothing better in any arena in basketball than hearing that. So I'm not a Nick hater. What I am, though, is a gentleman that loves to laugh at sports fans that reach for this golden eagle that's not there. It's not there. Your owner is a dope. You guys sell out the arena for teams that win 20 games. I get it, though. I really do. But I'm going to bring these two gentlemen on. The first one I'm going to introduce is an independent rap artist, actually a very good one. He is a TV producer, and he is one of the most knowledgeable hoop aficionados that I know. And I've seen him play. He got a little game. He got what I call that Zach Randolph game. He ain't going to dunk on nobody, but he going to give you many buckets on the paint. He got a real nice up and up. We we guarded each other a few times playing each other. There's a few times he got me with the spin on the baseline. Like, I gave him his props on his moves, but he got that Zach Randolph kind of game, man. And he's a really good dude, man. My man, y'all, geez. What's good with you, y'all? Welcome to Unsportsmanlike like Conduct, baby. Hey, thanks for having me, bro. Thanks for having me. Thanks for the wonderful intro, man. I feel like, I feel like a real superstar, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do, man. And next up. This gentleman, as I mentioned, you guys, in 94, 95, I lived in North Carolina. I played football with this gentleman for uh, Union High School, the Spartans. And uh, I, I mean, I honestly say we were probably the two best players on the team. I played quarterback, receiver, and corner. I made all conferences a corner. He was an all conference running back, one of the best high school running backs that I ever saw with my own eyes, undersized, stocky, fast, and pretty much carried our team. Because when I wasn't playing quarterback, the dude that was playing quarterback was some garbage, and that's just what it is. Is, but my man, he is actually the CEO of of um. I'm so I'm, I'm missing it. Oh, excuse me. Snap Judgment Entertainment. He is a promoter in ATL. 
He has a radio show down there in ATL. We're actually setting up a comedy show, uh, hopefully by the grace of God, to perform with DC, for me to perform with DC Young Fly in ATL. And he's got some kids that he's training in sports. My man Jermaine Thurston, but if you know him, you know him as Snap. What's good with you, Snap? What's good, chat man? Thank you for having me, man. Blessed to be on your show, baby. I appreciate it. All right, listen, let's get right into this. And because I've known you longer, Snap, I'm going to let you go first. Let me just say my piece. Number one, uh-huh. all this shit that y'all talking about getting <laughs> the Nick fans, you guys have been doing, listen, you guys have been doing this for like six or seven years. You're starting to sound like Laker fans, and I live in L.A. now. You're starting to sound like them where every offseason, we're going to get LeBron. No, we're going to get Wade. No, we're going to get this guy. We're going to get this guy. We're going to get this guy. This is the biggest, like, myth going in the last decade in sports is that not only were you going to get Zion, one X on that, we're doing this Family Feud style, now you're hoping and hinging on Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Give me two minutes to let me speak on this real fast, and I'm going to let both of y'all have the floor. First of all, you don't want okay. Kyrie. I like Uncle Drew, okay? I do. But at the end of the day, I come from an era where you fix the shit that's going on instead of tucking ass and running. Now, you had Boston on your list. <laughs> you got traded there, but you still had Boston on your list. And the Cavs did you a favor. This year, it was a flop. We get it. Sometimes it takes a year. Did LeBron and Wade win the first time together? No. Did Golden State win when they first got together? No. Did the Duncan and, and Rob, did they win? No. You don't win Shaq and Kobe? It takes a year or two. But for you to talk and think you're going to run to New York and that's supposed to fix things, I got to beef with that. Number two, Durant's not leaving Golden State. I don't understand why this is a story. The man is smart. Go to New York for what? He don't need New York. This is different with marketing. You don't need to live in these cities anymore. I can leave L.A. right now and still do radio and still get the same 25 states and 15 countries. I can still fly around the country and perform in nightclubs and doing comedy. And I can still go to ATL, New Orleans, and L.A. and shoot film whenever I want to. I don't have to live here. Sports is the exact same same way these guys can do what they do now because of branding and because of the internet and social media so this pipe dream that you guys keep yelling about and i'm glad i'm listen i hate to say this i'm gonna be real and i'm gonna shut up after this i'm kind of glad y'all didn't get the first (laughs) pick because i just want to look at y'all now and go see if you just really try to develop a team go through the last 20 years in the nba and pick every number one pick out and tell me how many of those teams went on to win championships and now even matter in the league. You can build with a fourth and a fifth and an eighth. Did anybody see Jokic coming as a second round pick? No. Did anybody see Draymond coming as a second round pick? No. Did anybody see uh, uh, Mitchell, Donovan Mitchell? Look at the teams that passed up on him. And I'm not saying that number one don't ain't good. But just do the math and do the numbers. You know who's sitting nice right now? The Hawks at 8 and 10. You may not think so, but they got two top 10 picks and at least two players in the top 10 you know are going to cash in in the NBA. So they have a better ch- a chance than the team with the number one pick. And this AD thing, I'm going to be honest, I kind of like it a little bit, but let's get real. Even though I hate it, LeBron and the Lakers have more to offer. The Celtics have more to offer. Snap, you get to go first, homie. You yeah. got about two, three Ooh. minutes. Then I'm going to flip nah, it to nah, Yao, yeah. and then I'm going to flip it back to you. My Take man. about a minute and a half, two minutes. It's on you, Snap. On, on, that, on that NO. Now, like you said, New Orleans does have it. But guess what? We have a golden ticket. Yeah, Lakers might have it, but you're trying to make your number one happy. Of course, we're New York fans. We be doing everything. But we, we're not looking for – we're looking for now. We've been doing this for so long. We're looking for now. Yes, we want to design to help. We was going to still trade to probably get the, K, the KD. We still in that sweet in that AD. We still in the sweet stakes. It's because now you want now you got your number one draft pick. I'm not saying he might not be happy in New Orleans. He's never been there. But guess what? To make your man, your client happy, where you're not going to have another AD situation. Guess what? You're going to bring his brother in there. His man Barrett. We got the third pick. Go ahead and get the third pick, and that will make everybody else around our squad. It's good. We don't need Kyrie. We can get Kimball. On that, it's still surround with along with, with with DeAndre, Dennis, and Kevin to make a, a complete New York Knicks squad. It's my opinion on it. All right, yeah, what you got for me, player? <laughs> <laughs> did you clear your Did you clear your throat? <laughs> uh, first, 
think first things first. I I um I do not believe uh, the Knicks are actually going to sign Kevin Durant and or or Kyrie Irving, despite the reports. Yeah. The reason why I say that is because um the Knicks have never given me a reason or any inclination that they could make a deal like this happen in my entire life. So, like, for you to be all of a sudden, you, you'd be a last place team and all of a sudden be able to negotiate a deal with, it, with possibly the best player in the, in, the, in the world and then also probably another top ten player in the world, just off a whim. Uh, I mean, I know the rumors out there that it's a 95% done deal, but that's still not 100%. Um, there's still plenty of time between now and July 1st. Plenty of things can change. Um, in regards to draft picks, yeah, I wanted I wanted Zion or or the, the one of the two honestly just, just because yeah honestly I wanted Zion to play in the guard and I think Zion is a very is a very correct good player. yes I think he's definitely I, I think he's very athletic uh, not necessarily all the way skilled but his motor is the, is the main reason why I enjoy watching that boy goes hard the entire game for every single possession true yes. very very true very true he's also also got the athleticism to also compete in the league at a high level at multiple positions. He's, he's 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 very 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 apt at playing defense. He enjoys playing defense and he loves the challenge of it. Is why I would love to have had Zion. Obviously, it's not going to be the case right now. The Knicks yeah. getting three, I'm not really mad about it. Honestly, uh, I think we can get a good draft pick, whether it be RJ, whether it be John Morant, or whoever else they're looking at. Um, if we were to give the keys to RJ, I'll be fine with that. Um, and also, the Knicks would be fools. I mean, they don't have the package, but they would be fools not to at least try to entertain the thought of trying to get AD, if depending upon where he wants to go. Um, I know he's going to have a no-trade clause, but you also got to think, I know the Pelicans got a new GM, but do they want to do business with the Lakers? Do they want to do business with uh, a team in their own conference that could actually prevent them from, you know, reaching higher status, status, status later on in, 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 in the future, over the next four or five years? So you got to take that into account. Now, I don't think I don't think the Knicks are going to fall any of these deals, honestly. In, in the event that they, they, they do, I'll be more than happy. I'll be elated and I'll be celebratory and I'll be drinking and I'll be ready. I'll be, but me personally, I just want to have a team that sustains some type of success and go through the steps. You know, win forty five games, then win 50, 50, 50, 50, 55 games, then win sixty games. We come become a, a, a hey. We've been doing that for a long time, event, and I'm tired of that. In the event, in the event, in the event that we do get KD. Automatically, you get KD, you become a 50 win team. That's how I really feel. Yeah, I think he is that good. Correct. You should be able to get 50 wins. And if that's the case, then we should stop putting things in motion and putting pieces in motion to try to make our, make us a real championship contender. But, like I said, until I see Kevin Durant in front of the Knicks logo next to Steve Mills and, uh, Scott Perry <laughs> and, yeah, and, facts. I mean, no, uh, I'm, not, I'm not even going on the Kyrie and all that. <laughs> Nah, I'm not, going. I'm not I'm feeding not, on the Kyrie. I'm, I'm, I'm not feeding on the Kevin Durant till I see it. Hold on, let so me ask you I'm guys. Even, let me, let, I'm, I'm going to help you guys with the Kevin Durant thing. I'm going to help you with the Kevin Durant thing. And and both of you, former athletes, and honestly, two of the most competitive guys that I ever played anything with. You guys are probably in the top 15 to 20 people that I've ever played anything competitively with. And you, both of your competitive natures are like up there with mine. You don't like to lose. It's about winning. It's about busting ass okay. and talking trash and, and being more athletic, smarter, whatever. Kevin Durant and the Golden State Warriors are probably going to win wing three this year. You cannot. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I would have a hard time thinking. I agree with that. That agree with anybody that. would would pass up four in a row in today's era when it hasn't been done since the '60s Celtics. Now. The, the, the thing comes up about, well, they're good. Clay's going to win his money. Clay, listen, 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 listen. People don't dig deep enough. Not you two gentlemen, but people, the average internet person doesn't dig deep enough. They, Kevin Durant can say, okay, I'm going to go for one more, and we'll try to get this four. But probably next year, I'm out of here. You sign Durant for one more year, yeah. you can still give Clay his max, and you probably, and then you're still working on what you're going to do with Boogie. Durant's probably out of there at some point. I don't think he's retiring as a warrior. He's out of there at some point. It's just the way the game is today. But I just don't think it's this summer. Now, next summer, whatever team is going to be available, even still maybe the Knicks, I will change my tune, especially if they win number four. But now you guys throw a name out there, and I'll go back to you, Yonder. and we'll flip it back to you, Snap, about R.J. Barrett. Now, I think, I, I'm not sure which one of you guys I text today or posted online to be talking about R.J. Barrett. Now, I understand guys can develop, okay? So let, let's not, 
Let's try to stay away from that argument. But Ben Simmons was supposed to have a jumper by now. Blake Griffin was supposed to have a better game instead of the game he actually has right now. There's there's always these players that we go, oh, he'll get the jumper. Oh, he'll get the left hand. Oh, he'll get the pull up. And we go three, four, five, seven years. Jason Kidd, it took a decade to get a jumper. Now, I understand Jason Kidd was also awesome at a bunch of other things. But when I look at R.J. Barrett and I see no, not even a resemblance of a right hand. You can't tell me that's at least three to four years down the line before it's that efficient to where you just don't see guys just say, okay, you're not going left. We're facing, we're forcing you right all day long. Nick fans aren't going to be willing to wait three to four years for that shit to materialize. You just, you both just said you're looking for the now. So I don't know if RJ Barrett's that guy. Your thoughts on that, y'all? I'm, 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 I can keep it all the way up. Okay, yeah, I can keep Keeping it all the way up, up. I, I wasn't a huge fan of RJ um, at Duke. Year, at Duke for the one year, I, I, I wasn't a huge fan. Um, I think he takes a lot of shots. I think he likes to have the ball in his hand a little too much. Uh, just the stat that I read that was crazy was, um, so I think uh, Zion throughout the course of the year had made a total of like three hundred and thirty shots, and. Barrett had missed like 340. Yeah, yeah, I saw the same you know thing. I mean? Exactly, so yeah, I saw like, the same thing. Yeah, yeah. He 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 takes he takes he take a ton of shots. But with that said, at three, if the Grizzlies uh, if the Grizzlies draft uh, Ja Morant, then RJ is the best player available in this draft to me. You you correct? I'm not sure. Can you over over the over, the over the kid from Texas? Tech? Over the kid from Texas Tech. Over the kid, over Culver, yeah, because, over Reddish, o- o- over Grant, yeah. all, all these, all these guys. Like you, nobody's going to convince me after watching college basketball this, this last year uh-huh. that any of those guys are better than uh, R.J. Barrett. If you look at Culver, Culver, Culver's, Culver had a good, he had a solid, he had a pretty good year. He had a solid tournament up until the Final Four, where he was just, I mean, keep it a buck. He was awful. He didn't play well at all in, in, in the Final Four, but you know. He's still one. He's still one of those guys. But I, I would take RJ over Culver. I think I'll take him in a heartbeat. As far as a better player, I'm not sure what the Knicks think they need. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what they think they need. But I would take RJ as a better player. Snap. Talk, talk, thing, snap. Somebody, talk to me about RJ Barrett Culver. Just something that you would see the Knicks doing at three. Like I said, what I said, what I see the Knicks doing at three is basically we can keep them. We also have a key to go ahead and get what we want. And like I said, I think we can go for AD because basically it will make it will make Zion better with his with, where he can join forces with the person who you play ball with. If not, we still can keep them. But we don't. Like I said, we have our our, our a shooter. We have our small fault. We have a point guard. We have a center. We have a shooting guard. We can develop in him, and we still have enough money to get our two free two big name free agents that can come. We get AD with our third pick and probably give it to New Orleans and get AD. Hey, we can get one big agent, get Kimball Walker, somebody point guard, and we straight. We don't need that Kyrie and K. I'm not even talking about that Kyrie and, and Kevin Durant. I'm more on what we, what's available right now, and I think that we can get AD. We have the, the ticket to get AD. If we don't, then like I said, we can keep we can keep Barrett and developing it and still get our two um two big market free agents in the, um in the, um this year in the season. Now I'm not I'm gonna be real with you. I don't mind. I don't mind the AD thing, and I said that earlier. I really don't, and the only reason why is because I know the Lakers, now, but the, now I'm going to tell you what I think, but I'm going to tell you what I think is going to happen. What I think is they would love to shot the third for AD, and then New Orleans is like, okay, well, we got the first and the third. Now, I know people are saying, exactly. and they're probably going to pair them and RJ, which would be a disaster, because if he took shots away from Zion in college, he's going to take shots away from Zion on the NBA level. It's not going to change. I just think that would be a disaster. What I think that third pick would be, though, uh, what they could do with that pick is, um, is uh, New Orleans is shop that pick now. So now you have the first and the third and you've shot AD to get that third. Now you can actually shop that pick around to bring somebody in on the front court that can really help them out. Somebody they may be looking to get out of their team or get out of their situation. Contract wise. Hey, maybe you call Philly. 
I'm just throwing it out there. I told Chris Broussard yeah, and Rob I, Parker face to face last summer when we were at a sports okay. bar watching the game together. I do past 2020, and I put this out on my social media. I did not believe Simmons and Embiid will be together past 2020. It doesn't work. I can see that in the first 30 games they played together. It doesn't work. What? You got a guy who can't well, Butler shoot. And Butler, yeah, Butler, Butler's going to be on his issue. Then you got my man that can't. So you, you, we have an option. Like you said, shop that third. Option. Yeah, exactly. We'll bring AD. Yeah. Then with the AD, we'll bring somebody else in here. I, so that's what we're using that for. We don't need it. That, that's bring true. Another, another here, here, here. star to us. Go, go ahead, y'all. What are you, my, your thoughts on shopping that third with New Orleans and what you would do with the Knicks if you grab AD and now what do you do with that free agent money? I couldn't hear what you said. I'm like sorry. A, Oh, I'm sorry. I said, I said, if you, if you were, if you were, um, if you're the Knicks, you get AD, you shop the third. You're New Orleans. You now have the first and third, and you're the Knicks. You now have AD and a lot of cap space to bring in a free agent. Your thoughts on that? Next year, I think, I think next year. I mean, that's that, that's the that's the legitimate play if you want to wait till next year, but. Who say like sometimes? Sometimes you wait till next year, and you can end up getting burned like the Lakers did, trying to wait for Kawhi, trying to wait for Paul George. Exactly. Sometimes you gotta make you gotta make these moves immediately. Now, what I what I what another another one of my coworkers brought up a good point to me. He said the Knicks should try to package a few players as well as that pick to the Wizards for Bradley Beal, which I think is a genius idea. Honestly, um, I like it. I'm not I, I, like I said, I'm I'm not sure if Kyrie's coming. I'm not. Uh, they say KD is coming. I mean, that, that, that's the word on the street. But if Kyrie doesn't come, I would gladly take a team with KD and Bre- Bradley Beal. And then whoever comes after next, because we'll have cap space next year too. Whoever wants to come after that, that should be fine as well. You know, that, 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 that's 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 legitimate plans. If it's something to think about, you know, facts. And 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 and, and, I, and I totally agree on that. Like you said, we we have the option to do that. Like I said, with that third pick, like I said, we have a golden opportunity. I mean, are yeah. you going to go, are you going to listen to talk to Zion and be like, hey, Zion, what would make you happy? What would make you happy here? You'll probably ask him that question. He'd probably say, I want my brother here. And he'll get to exactly. that. Exactly. 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 To build on. Exactly. And he's so comfortable. Exactly. I'm not sure how much leverage you have, but that's what he wants. Exactly. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely do it with third pick. Okay, get AG. No question. Okay, now I told you guys what I think, but now I'm going to tell you what I know is going to happen. And this brings it back right. around, because everything I do in basketball, of course, has to revolve, revolve around who I am. And who I am is I'm, I'm partly, uh, what I call myself is a LeBron-like hater. I'm a LeBron-like hater. I can admit it. I'm a LeBron-like hater. There's things I like about him. There's things I don't like about him. So I'm kind of I'm kind of on both sides with LeBron. I like the way he handles his personal life. I like the way he handles his business acumen. Yeah. I like the way he looked out for his homies from Akron. I like all that stuff. He seems like he would be a cool dude to hang out with and hang around. But I don't like him as a basketball player, and I don't like the way he circumvented the game and the the, the Miami thing and and, and the way the, the you know Cleveland went down and now with the Lakers. And I'm I'm sorry, I just I I don't like that. I like I'm old school. I like when guys stick it out, or even when you make a trade demand, you make you push your franchise to make a move, and they make some moves, and then you go on and win or whatever. whatever that that's fine with me. I don't have a beef with that. But now I'm gonna get into the conspiracy theory of the whole NBA lottery draft. I always feel like, and y'all, you and I talked about the Patrick Ewan envelope. We've talked about Chicago with Derrick uh-huh. Rose. We've talked yeah. about Cleveland. LeBron leaves. Cleveland gets two of the next three number one picks. Uh, Kobe wasn't allowed to get Chris Paul when Chris Paul was going to get traded. The NBA's done this for New Orleans before. These things are not, these things are not just out of thin air and they come from nowhere. I feel like that there is a lot of, kind of wink wink in the NBA because of the money that's involved and because of the pe- the powers that be who run it. And you yeah. got LeBron Thanks. out in the Laker in Laker lanes out here in Lakerland living his life doing big things and he wanted AD and didn't get AD. I always say my main beef with LeBron is he has too much single child syndrome for me and this is what I mean. When you have brothers and sisters, you learn to share, you learn to accept some of the blame and we always go and place a little blame. But when you got siblings, you learn these things as you grow. When you're a single child, it's always going to be me, 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 me. Don't believe me? Go date a single child woman. Go date a woman that's a single child. And you're going to see exactly how much she knows how to share and knows how to actually accept blame and be a union. <laughs> and, and at the end of the day, for her, but for you too, not just for her. So I always felt like LeBron was that type of guy, which is fine. 
but I, I'm allowed to call what I see. And he didn't get AD. Thanks. And he wants his way still. He still wants AD. And I think there's some type of wink, wink. Well, LeBron's like, I think LeBron's got the NBA by the balls. I felt like that for the last decade. You do what I say. I'm your money maker. I'm the Jordan didn't do it this way, and Kobe should have, but he didn't do it, and Shaq and I. But I'm gonna do it. They should have done it, but I they didn't do it because they played the nice game. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna hold y'all by y'all balls. Y'all gonna give me what I want. I'm gonna walk in with wine. I'm gonna say what I want. I'm gonna do what I want, and I'm gonna tell the press that you won't control me, and ain't none of y'all gonna do nothing about it because I drive the needle. I got no beef with that. If you got power, you're allowed to flex it. And this whole thing with New Orleans getting the number one pick. What does it do? We're all in agreement. It makes it easier to trade AD now. I don't care what nobody says. Because the Lakers now hold number four. They couldn't put the Lakers over the Knicks. That would have been too suspicious. Memphis needs some help because they're about to lose Conley. So they're like, okay, listen. We'll hook y'all up with number two. We can't give y'all number one because we kind of owe New Orleans. And this is kind of our track record. We normally look out for New Orleans. That is a big tourist money town for us. There's fans in that building who don't live there. But if you go to New Orleans and you can get a ticket, trust me, they go to the games. They'll put on a red jersey and they'll go to the game just to say, yeah, when we was in New Orleans, we ate some etouffee. We had some alligator. We went to Drago's and had the flame gr- uh, grilled uh, uh, oysters with the cheese <laughs> and the garlic on them. And then we went to the damn game and we got drunk and we went on Bourbon Street and had a good time and had been yays at 2 o'clock in the morning. That's New Orleans. Hey, so, I agree. So we got to hook them up and now the Lakers can make this trade and now they don't even have to give up everybody. They can say, look, we'll give you Ingram, Ball, in the fourth, or we'll give you Kuzum, Ball, in the fourth. Ball's in the deal. Ball's done. Ball will never play ball's another dribble. Yeah, ball's in the deal. Ball's done. Yeah, he, ball's he, in yeah, the deal. It depends on whether the, 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 it depends on whether they turn around and say, okay, well, we already got Drew at the one, and we could use a more established score in two that we could put alongside of Zion. Oh, i.e., they both went to Duke, so they're immediately Immediately friends, they immediately are going to get along. We won't have any BS here, at least for the next four to five years, until we keep losing and one of them's going to want out again. But we'll deal with that when we get down that road. And here you go, LeBron. You still get your AD. Y'all, I'll let you ride first on that, bro. Do I got something, y'all? Listen, throughout the, throughout the entire course of the season, I've been saying Oh, there's been some funny shit that's going on with the NBA. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's just happening. I agree. I agree. Um, a lot of these stuff, I mean, as, as far as this year is concerned, the Lakers being in the top four definitely looks a little shady. Um, the Pelicans getting the number one pick also looks a little shady because they just weren't, nobody was expecting that to happen at all. We were all discussing about teams giving packages to them because we figured they were going to have pick number, I think, nine or ten. Yep. Uh, so exactly. listen, down the, up, and, up and down the line, I think definitely there's always some type of finagling that goes on with the league. Um, I'm not sure for sure, uh, 100%, but, you know, it def- it's definitely possible. Um, the powers that be, this, 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 there's, there's a lot of funny shit that's going on with the league, even with the Tim Donaghy, the way the refs call fouls in the playoffs as opposed to the regular season. It, 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 the, the, the NBA's got some funny shit that goes on within it. You know what I mean? Like Michael Jordan gets suspended for two years for gambling, and they called it him retiring for a year or two, whatever it was. Yeah, I don't know. There's always, always funny shit that's going on with the league. I try not to feed into it because I just love the sport so much, and just I just feel like um, I don't want to, you know, question the league's integrity. But you know, it, the, the evidence is there. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. I mean, just real, real quick, before I let you go. Snap. Think about it. Who else is in the running for AD? Boston, correct? Boston's in the running, right? I mean, so how does Boston end up correct. with that number 14? Think about that. They got the picks that they can already use <coughs> from the other draft, but those picks are actually, uh, 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 what, what do they call them? Those are actually protected top five and top four picks. So it's correct. not even guaranteed correct. that they can even use those picks. So they get hit with number thir- 14, where it's like the league saying, you may get AD, but you're going to have to, you're going to lose Rozier. You're going to lose because Rosier is gone. Like he made it known. He yeah. went on ESPN. Yeah. He said his feelings with well, the first team put big money up for him. I don't think he's looking to win. I think he's looking to say, hey, this is what I, you know, y'all, y'all. he seems like a y'all will miss me guy. Like, OK, y'all, and, instead of looking at the bigger picture. But and, and I'm not saying that they did it right. They did it wrong. They should have been playing no more. 
But like I said, everybody stick around and work that thing out. You got something special there in the next three to four years in the Eastern Conference. You're really only looking at Milwaukee to battle because everybody thinks that uh, the Leonard's out of Toronto. So Toronto's not even going to be viable next season or the year after. If you take, if you keep that together, everybody swallow their pride and say, listen, let's, let's do this one more year. Let's try it one more year. Kyrie can opt in, guys. He's not a just total free agent. He has to opt out. He can opt in and say, I'll give y'all one more year, and then I'll be a free agent next year when who else is available out there? The Miami Heat. Nobody's talking about the stuff that Raleigh's doing and freeing up all this money and room for next year when Westbrook can opt out, when some of these other guys in their contracts can opt out. Because I think Westbrook could pull a Durant, but that's a different story for a different day. But when you just look at the picks, Miami's sitting at number 13. We can't hook y'all up this year because y'all got big money next year. Charlotte, uh, well, you might be losing Kimba, so why would we do you any favors right now? Then Minnesota, Atlanta ends up with 8 and 10. Washington is sandwiched in there at 9. Chicago Phoenix, Cleveland. And like y'all said, how the hell does the Lakers... Now, here's another stat for you, y'all. The Lakers have a top four pick the last five years in a row. When the hell have you seen that out of a franchise like the Lakers? Never. Like the league is trying to never, help them never, up. Never. The front office you keeps know, screwing it, it, it up. It, the league is trying to help the Lakers. It, 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 the league is trying to help who's ever behind it. And like I said, I know it's a conspiracy, you know, dealing with sports and being deep into it. Like you said, the beginning of, of the lottery, you was talking about Atlanta, Chicago, New York. We never heard New Orleans. Also, New Orleans with the number one pick, like, come from out of nowhere. And what the first thing I said was, oh, they're trying to give them back for that call for that you missed out in the Super, for them going to the Super Bowl and lost all that money and all that, bo- all that stuff. Yeah. So to me, it's always been a conspiracy of helping somebody out when you do something. Like you said, big money market when it comes to sports, they help you, help them out. But it's more of so many things, a conspiracy, like you said, I don't know how the league doing, but we don't know. They're not going to give us everything. They're not going to tell us everything. The, the people who do pay attention to sports know there's something that's going on, and there's something that you know it needs to be needs to be stopped. And we can sit here and look at it and tell this is what might happen. The speculations. They can do whatever they want to do. Um, I don't. That that like you said that <coughs> New York deal coming through with KD and them. I I don't know. Not fishy about it. But when we have the option of doing something, if Lakers ain't getting it. We already know something's going to be on. We already know that LeBron controls everything. So you're right on that. Okay. They, All right. They, yeah. They gave him what they wanted. No, I'm a, I, and, and, and I'm a, and I'm a, and, I, and that's, and that's my thing. I'm, I'm just calling it the way I see okay. it. I'm not hating. I, the man's got control. I'm just calling the control. Don't, don't say, don't tell me I'm hating because I'm calling the control. I, I think he's got the stroke to wink, wink with the league and say, listen, you guys see what's going on out here. Frank Vogel, and then you're going to bring in Kid. Is it? We know Kid's the coach. Kid's the coach in waiting. We've seen this story before. When I watch Goodfellas, I don't think that Harry at the end is not going to snitch on Jimmy and Pauly. I know what he's about to do. He's about to sit up in court and snitch. I've seen this movie before. As many times as I don't want Sammy the Bull to point at John Gotti in that New York courtroom, he's going to point at him at some point in the movie. The shit don't change. So I don't understand why people go, oh, no. I just think the league, I think now the league makes it look kind of obvious. It's like, hold up. Now it makes it easier for like AD wrestling. to be traded. I like wrestling. I under- exactly. It's like watching WWE. We know Boston's got assets. <laughs> we know the Knicks. <clears throat> excuse me. We know the Knicks are players. But the main team that went after him hard, that the whole storyline before the trade line, the trade deadline was the Los Angeles Lakers and LeBron James. And it did not change yeah. with the draft lottery. I look at it and I go, now I tell you this, they could at least give the Knicks two. They weren't going to give the Knicks Zion. I just, I never saw that coming. I'm like, they're not giving the Knicks. I honestly picked Cleveland. When I had a post on Facebook, everybody's throwing their team. I said, you know what? I got them doing it to Cleveland because, once again, I've seen this before, and LeBron kind of left them and then went away. Kyrie got out of there. Players, though, Kevin Love started the first 30 games hurt on the bench. I mean, and their franchise just spiraled out of control again. And we've seen the league go, okay, we're kind of sorry that LeBron did that to you guys. Here's Kyrie Irving. Shit, they gave him another one. It's their fault they drafted Bennett. Ain't nobody told they asked to draft Bennett. So they blew that. It's like, I look at the Lakers. It's like the league is trying their best without letting it be known to, 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 uh, to help you guys out and Genie and yeah. Magic and whoever and Rambus and Rambus's wife, whoever, they keep screwing the damn thing up. So it's almost, uh, obvious to see. I'm going to let both of you guys go on this. I'm going to ask you guys one simple question. Y'all, I'll give it to you first. When we tip, 
in October and the Knicks throw the ball up for the very first time of the 2019-2020 season, give me some resemblance of what type of team we're looking at. Well, just what your heart tells you, what your mind thinks is going to happen. Oh, uh, look, man. Look, listen. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, re- I truly don't know. Uh, I'm going to say this. I'm going to give you two, two scenarios. And I'm going I'm to give, give you the scenarios with and without KD. With KD, if KD's on that team, the Knicks, win, the Knicks will go 50-32. Will go and 32. Okay. No KD on the team. And we get a, we get some type of semblance of some type of free agent between Kemba, uh, Kyrie, Jimmy Butler, Tobias Harris. Let's say this: if the, if, if, if the Knicks, if, at the very least, the Knicks will probably get Kemba, Tobias Harris. Out there, Knicks win forty two games, maybe sneak and get an eighth, eighth or seventh seed for the playoffs. And I'd say this far, let you go. Snap. I've always liked Tobias Harris. I was pissed that my Pistons traded him because Van Gundy knew his job was on the line and does what a lot of coaches in that situation have done before. They try to trade and make a big splash, thinking it's going to save their job when you're already fired. Yeah. The franchise is just trying to be nice and not do it in the middle of the season. So you give up Tobias to get Blake and all those other pieces, which I thought was the dumbest trade. And we still have the worst that everybody thinks is good point guard in the league. I can't stand Reggie Jackson. Jackson. I hated that we got him from OKC. I've been saying it since day one. He's not the point guard for that team. Somebody needs to put him at the two on another squad where he's like the fourth option, and then he may be all right. But to put up twenty five and thirty shots the way he does, anyway, I, 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 I just be in my feelings about my about my beloved bad boy Pistons. But when 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 when, when I look at Tobias, I've always liked Tobias, so I like that call. I think the Kimba thing is there because I think Kimba's still searching for his brand, and he's not a guy now i did say you don't have to be in certain cities but that only applies to certain guys i don't think kimba's that guy that can be anywhere and build the brand like i think donovan mitchell eventually has got to get out of utah if he wants to be global if he wants to build a real that spider if he wants to really coin that spider and he ain't coined it in, in uh salt lake city he's a guy that's probably got to get to another level and i like the kimba call because i think kimba's that level kind of player where i like kimba yeah, you and I talked about Kimba when he was at UConn when we were both living up in Connecticut. Yeah. We're both we're both Kimba guys. But I do think if he's looking to expand the Kimba Walker brand, then New York would be a good move for him. And and they'll they'll love him up there because they're basketball aficionados. He's a New York kid. He went to college right across the border in CT. So I I, I like those two calls. Nice nice call. That's why I bring on. That's why I bring guys like you on, man. Like that nice call. I, I didn't even <laughs> I didn't even think about the Tobias name. The Tobias name didn't even come up. But you saying it just now. I'm like, hold up now. He's right. You get Tobias yeah. and Kimba, yeah, that's 42, 43 wins, and you could get a 7 for 8, and then you still got money for next summer when some other names of somebody, and now, KD, like I said, next summer might look at that and go, hmm, Tobias and Kimba, they got them to 40. Well, I'm, shit, I'm definitely worth 12 to 15 myself. We could be a 55, 60 win team and start pushing you know, Boston, if they stay together, or, or a Milwaukee, depending on what happens with them over the next year. So, nice call, man. All right, Snap. Open at night, baby. What we see, player? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm the same thing. Without without AD, I think, like I said, we, we get a nice draft pick. Let me go ahead and get, like I said, Kimball, like I said earlier in the show, um, and pick up Bobby Butler or somebody like that, because, like I said, we do have, you know, great rookies in um, um, Alonzo and Kevin Knox. You know, we still got DeAndre Jordan. So, I mean, we, we have a I can see there's about 40, 40 wins. Like I said, squeaking in that eight, eight to seven, seven slot, making it difficult, making it a, a real challenge for the, the 20s, the 20th season. So I see us, I see us that, you know, without that AD, I see us sneaking in the seven, eight, if we keep our draft pick and go ahead and get one of these big free agents. I really see that. All right. One last question for each of y'all. Simple yes or no. Yao, do you guys get AD or not? No. Snap. Yeah. No. Yeah, no. Nigga, what, you, nigga which one? <laughs> that was me. That was me. I, 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 oh, I okay. I just said, yeah, no. Like, nigga, what the hell? What the, what this ain't, man, this, 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 this ain't, this ain't multiple choice. Yes or no? But you got, yeah, you got, yeah, snap? Yeah, I got, yeah. Okay. All right, listen. Uh, yeah, I'll tell everybody where they can find you on your social media. Plug your music, man. Let everybody know what's up with you, bro. 
Yeah, man. Uh, my name is Yao. Uh, you can hit me on IG and Twitter at Yao Music. So Y A W Music. Um, those are the, those are my two main uh, social media outlets. Uh, if you need, if you want any work, uh, hit my email yaogs one at gmail dot com. I got music coming out. I got some projects, TV coming out. So be on the lookout. And we still got to talk about you being on the soundtrack to my first feature film that I'm directing and uh, playing the lead in. So we ain't done with business, homie. Definitely. Let me know. All right. No doubt. Snap. Tell, tell everybody where they, where they can get at you, Snap. Hey, you can reach me on FB at um, Jermaine Snap Thurston, or you can follow me on um, IG, which is Thurso one And you can catch me on Sundays, 4 to 6, on armradio.com. I guess I'm here in the ATL. And hey, whenever you ATL, just hit me up, baby. I appreciate both y'all brothers, man. My man, Yao D's, and my man, Janae Snap Thurston, man. Appreciate y'all guys, man. Enjoy the rest of your day. God bless. My man, love you, baby. No doubt. Good stuff right there, man. Good stuff. And you see the different opinion from Nick fans. You see the different type of opinions from uh, from Nick fans and, and uh, how people feel about what the Knicks are going to be and what's going to happen. I just think it's just all a pipe dream. I think that it's just all... Um, just wishful thinking. I honestly don't believe that they're getting AD. I don't think that they're getting KD. I don't think that they're getting Kyrie. Oh, that rhyme. You're not getting AD, Kyrie, or Kyrie. Y'all see them bars? Bars. Vanilla sports talk bars. But I don't think they're getting any. I mean, here comes my other special guest right now. I was going to take a quick break, man, but we just going to keep it moving because things are flowing so great this morning on VJ's Unsports. Like, kind of, and while we got a quick minute before I bring in my next special guest, I want to thank you all for listening to me live right now on Spreaker.com, VJ's Unsports for Like Conduct. As always, I'm your host, VJ Vernon Husky, a.k.a. the Big Vanilla Funny, the Vanilla Shack, 8515. VJ, right? That's because he always thinks he is. The Creamy Kobe, the Blue Eye Barkley, Blue, the, the, uh, the VA's Top Talk Boy, Mr. Never Shut Up, Mr. Vanilla Conspiracy Theory, because they've been conspiracy theories out there and somebody's got to speak on them and i just like to start some stuff sometimes so anyway we've gone through all of that we talked about golden state we talked about kd and we've given a bunch of opinions and we've had nick fans on we have rational guys on irrational guys on i like to have a lot of fun on my show being a stand-up comedian and an actor and a writer and a producer and sports talk broadcast all the things i do i got to give you guys different levels of my show so we have some fun and we have some and we have some irrational stuff and then we have some internet social media guys but i always make sure i bring somebody on that's more professional than all of us that knows more than all of us, that's more special in the industry than all of us, and he gets a paycheck for doing what he does, so therefore, we probably might want to listen to him and take his word and his advice and the things that he's done. My special guest right now has trained some of the top names of the jerseys that your kids are wearing. He has his own thing going with his basketball website. This man has been around basketball 30, 40 years at every level, high school, college, and the pros, coach, train, scout, does a little bit of everything. And every time I talk to this gentleman, I feel like I'm a little smarter when it comes to the NBA after I finish talking to him. I I, I mean, I, I don't know what it is. Like, I guess it just happens like that. One of my good friends, we met on another affiliate uh, doing the show over on Blog Talk Radio. But NBA scout, NBA trainer, works with all the draft kids going into the draft. And uh, probably one of the smartest and more knowledgeable and uh, probably cool storytelling NBA guys that I know. My man... My good friend and uh, one of the best, uh, one of the best guys that you can bring onto the show, man. My man, Mr. Tom Perkins. What's going on, buddy? How you doing today? Hey, DJ. I love that intro. I wish you go ahead, go ahead and do another twenty minutes of intro because I don't get it that good. <laughs> I don't get it that good everywhere else. <laughs> That's great, great intro. Well, you know what, man? I have this thing where I, I know my talent level and I know who I am, so I don't have a problem bigging other people up. I don't have a problem uh, pumping other people up because I believe in life. You can pat yourself on the back, but sooner or later, your arm's going to get tired. And it's okay for other people to acknowledge who you are, acknowledge what you bring to the table. We do it for our spouses. We do it for our friends. So why can't we do it for people that we share in an, uh, an industry with? And, you know, I'm no threat to you. You're no threat to me. I'm on my path. You're on your path. So why not big up somebody who has accomplished as much as some of my guests has and who has some of the best stuff to say that a lot of my guests have? I, I'm, just, I'm just cut that way, man. I, it doesn't always have to be about me. Well, the thing is, V, uh, a lot of people are not as secure as you. 
You know who you are. You're, you're just like Kevin Durant. You can look right into the camera and you can tell him, you know who I am. You know who I am. <laughs> I'm VJ. Y'all know who I am. Don't That's act right. like you, you don't. know who I am. Yes. <laughs> and so because you're, because you're secure, you don't mind giving it up and our lifestyle. I appreciate that about you. And I think everybody appreciates that about you because you're a real guy. Thank you, so, man. Uh, and I, and I realize that. I, I do. I'm, I'm humble enough to say thank you, but, you know, I, I realize that and that's how I've been able to get as far as I have in my in, in this industry with, you know, no formal college training or, you know, no big shiny degree from the journalist program of this school or that school or communications and mass. It's just been all gr- gr- grind and grit. I know how to talk. I know how to put my pain out there. I'm strong on my conviction. I don't let the media shape my mind. And I just try to be myself. And, it, and it's and it's worked out for me. So I'll keep doing what I do. That's fantastic. I mean, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of stuff going on here with the playoffs and, and yes. the lottery. And yes, this yes, and yes, oh, yes. Man. Well, let's, let, let's get right into it. I want to start with your, you already know your time limit, so I know how long I got you, and I know what you got to be into in about 45 to 50 minutes, so we're going to cover a few things. Let's start with the playoffs and the conference finals. I, st- I opened up the show by saying, in sports, we we always cheer for what we don't like, at the same time, like we want the players in the league to not have egos and to just be a little, a little spunky and bust people's tail and put up stats and win and do it for the team. But then we don't like when it happens. And Golden State is that example. No Boogie right now. No Durant right now. And they all just fall into their own shell. Steph goes, okay, let me hand you 33 in the second half to close out this series. Like legends and champions do. Hold that. And then, oh, Dame and McCullough, you guys are as good as me and my Splash brother? Okay, how about you hold this 36 and 26 and take this and take this whooping now, tonight, and we're going to beat y'all again in two more nights, and we'll see y'all up at the road, or, well, a.k.a. the O. Rose Garden up 2-0. Here you go. And 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 but we don't like it. But it's what we asked for. Steph Curry has decided that you know what, Durant, we need you, but you need us a whole hell of a lot more than we need you. And I'm secure enough. I'm a five-time all NBA guy. I led the league in steals and scoring. I'm a six-time all-star. I'm a two-time MVP. Mind you, unanimous. I'm 49% from the field. I'm 92% from the free throw line. I'm 45% from the three-point line career. I'm 25, 5, and 5. I'm not going to be one of the GOATs, but I'm still the best shooter any of you have ever seen. So I'll take your scoring so it could take some years, put some years on my body. So when you do decide to leave, I still got a little left to collect maybe ring 5 and 6. And I'm going to take a back seat. But we look at it and we go, oh, Steph is slumping. Steph ain't that good. Steph, just, am I crazy, man? Or are we just watching, honestly, one of the most underrated, greatest players to really come through this league, and we're just disrespecting it because we like so much flash today. Yeah, I think you're so right because, you know, when you look at Steph and his body, he looks like a kid that just got out of the mall. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, he's hanging out at the mall, you know, with oversized shorts or whatever, uh, his pants, and, and just like a regular high school kid, but he plays like a man. Uh, at the same time, to be realistic about it, that's one of the reasons why the Rockets were relatively successful with them because they could push him around. He's not a strong kid, but he's a gutsy kid. And gutsiness with skill can over, can overcome being not so strong. Uh, and you know, people can say what they want about his defense, but the kid tries. He tries. Stephen Curry tries, and he does play the passing lanes very expertly. I mean, he's got guys on his team, like, of course, uh, 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 Green and Clay Thompson and Iguodala, who do play super defense. And then, of course, when uh, KD's in there, he plays good defense, too. So, you know, he doesn't have to do it all by himself. But, yeah, people like to go ahead and say, well, wait a minute. I, I look stronger than this guy, and mm-hmm. I saw a guy at the gym that's stronger than this guy. And then all of a sudden, you, you lost by 20 points. <laughs> so, yeah, he, he wakes people up in a hurry. Is this series kind of a foregone conclusion? I mean, I think five or six. I love Dame. I love McCullough. I really do. I like Enos. I like Canner. I love the way Canner plays. But last night was just such a microcosm to, like, his career. There was, like, four possessions where he had, like, four offensive rebounds in a row, but he missed every putback. And it's just kind of what they are. It's, it's, if you think just two guys 
are beating this Golden State team. We haven't even seen a game where Iguodala goes for 20. We know one's coming because they're going to dare him to shoot. Uh, Houston dared him to shoot. That's, in my opinion, that's what helped seal that series in three and six. If you're going to keep letting this guy shoot, I know you don't believe he can shoot, but this guy is a 12, 13 year veteran. He's done this before. He's taken a thousand jump shots in practice and you're just going to, I never think, I never loved the we'll let him shoot thing. What if they go in? Like it's 50, 50. I just don't like rolling the dice at 50, 50. So, you know, there's that game, you know, Draymond's got a triple double 22, 13 and 11 game in him when Steph may not shoot well, or uh, Clay may not shoot well. Is this, is this series kind of foregone to you? And if so, what, what, what do you think this ends? Five, six, seven? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, you would think it's foregone, but I don't know. I, I have a little bit more confidence in Portland than that. But yeah, I think it's probably going to go six games, and um, because you know this is a gutty team with a lot of heart. They've gone through a lot of things. I recently wrote a piece about how I think they're the most underrated team in the NBA, and they've gone through a lot of hardship and a lot of aches and pains. And they've come back. You know, they lost their, their beloved owner in 2018. Mm-hmm. They lost to LaMarcus Aldridge a couple of years ago. They're all-star, they're perennial, perennial all-star. And, and so they've made things work in spite of all that. And, of course, uh, Neil Olshi, uh deserves so much credit for putting those players in place. And, of course, Terry Stotts, who coached them very well. So, no, I don't think it's, like, over, over, mm, probably, but... Probably six games, I'd say, um, because, uh, they, you know, they know how to play. They know how to play without KD. And um, all of those experiences, especially from four years ago when they have had a similar team with Bogut even, and, of course, Iguodala and Livingston. See, Iguodala and Livingston are interesting pieces. Now, those guys four years ago were really, really stellar. Uh, and they could probably pay, play 25, 30 minutes at a stellar clip. Mm-hmm. They can't do that any longer, but they don't need to. All they need to do is be the Igadala and Livingston four years ago for 18 minutes. If they can play 18 minutes like that, then that's all uh, Golden State needs, and they can do that. Absolutely. Um, let's jump over to the Eastern Conference Finals that starts tonight. I think it's a riveting matchup. I, I'm, I'm looking at seven. I think Kawhi is good enough to win two by himself, and the Greek Freak is good enough to win two by himself. And then it depends on which role players and which bench is going to actually help Middleton, uh, Gasol, Lowry, uh, Brogdon's back now. Uh, shout out to UVA, my home state number one university uh, national champions in college basketball. Even though I'm a Tar Heel, still got to give a shout out to the home state university uva the cavaliers there i have a few friends that went there graduated and played football there so you know you got brogdon and you know you have bledsoe you have you have these guys that it just depends on which team is going to get the better role play on the road we know teams play better at home we know role guys and Shaq says the others play better at home but what teams road guys show up that one night? Because you're gonna have to win on the road if you're if you're if you're uh, Toronto. You got to win one on the road because you only get three at home. But if you're if you're Milwaukee, you've been known to give up one at home. So you're gonna have to win one yourself on the road because they let the they let uh they let the Nets come in there. And I'm excuse me, not the Nets, um, Orlando. They let Orlando oh, come in there, yeah, and take uh, game. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Who, who who took game one from them in the first round? I think Boston. Boston in the second round. I'm sorry, they swept Detroit in the first round. Boston. So Boston took game one there. So they, they you've seen them lose one on the road. I, I think this series is getting kind of undersold, and I like it in seven. What 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 are your thoughts on on this Eastern Conference Finals and Kawhi after the big shot and the Greek after his domination in first and second round? Yeah, I think you're totally on mark. Because I think it's going to go seven because, uh, you know, Kawhi Leonard is really something else. He's, I mean, this guy is special. You know, everybody's talking about, you know, KD's the best or this guy's the best or LeBron's the best, uh, you know, uh, 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 the company is best. But quite frankly, Kawhi Leonard is right there. His game is really stellar and, and he plays such within himself where he doesn't do crazy things. He, you hardly ever see him do crazy things. Like, for example, 
Steph Curry does crazy things. You know, he'll pass the ball behind his back when it's not necessary. But Kawhi Leonard is always plays within himself, and he's going to make sure that the games are a close, and that he he probably is going to steal one or two games himself. So it's going to be quite an exciting series. And of course, you know, Antetokounmpo uh, gives a complexion to this series that. That is really something unique because, you know, he can get a rebound, uh, a defensive rebound, four dribbles, and he's at the rim. Yeah. At the rim. It's incredible. It's crazy. It's crazy. I've never seen anything like it. So, yeah, he's he's, going to be a big factor. Of course, I I have a lot of faith in uh, Eric Bledsoe, too. He, you know, here's a guy that is small, somewhat like uh, Steph Curry. But there's nothing small about his body. No, no, no. He that looks like a strong guy safety. Is strong. Yeah, yeah. He's built like he a strong is. safety or a running back in the NFL. Right, and then he's got he's got the long reach. Though, I mean, this guy's and and he's a very good basketball player. So, so you cannot uh, look past him. And uh, and even look, Brook Lopez. You know, he's shooting about twenty four percent from the three right now in the, in the playoffs. But he's going to pick that up. And Brooke Lopez is a really uh, fine addition to this team. And don't sleep on Pat Connaughton. Pat Connaughton is uh, <laughs> yeah. He's a gutsy player. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's and one he of those. Just, he's one of those guys. Like you use the right word. He's just. He's just gutsy, man. He's just and everybody. And and listen, I grew up in a diverse neighborhood, and I played with diverse kids. And, and but and in certain sports, it was mostly black people on the team. And when you had. Uh, when you have one of the, you know, the suburban white kids on your team, they were normally a, either a great, especially basketball. They were either normally just an outstanding shooter or a very heady player or they were tough as hell and very gutsy from the areas I came from. And you're right. Yep. When I watch him play, he reminds me of some, we had some guys in high school, man. We had like two guys on the squad that, and one of them was a leaper and one of them was a jumper and he could get it. He could leap up out the gym and you blink me and you, you lay back off him because you think, Okay, you're like here's this white kid in front of me, but he gets past you, bro, and he can take off from outside the paint. He's gonna dunk on you, so don't sleep, don't yeah. sleep on him. And he reminds me of that guy. And like I said, I love diversity, and it's always cool to see a guy like that uh, in in the NBA making his mark in a sport that's dominated, you know, mainly by 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 a certain uh, type of player. You see a guy like that come along, and everybody, you know, when you get a guy like that, you need a guy like you need a kid like that. On your team, and he and he's and he's a good story too because he wasn't highly touted out of uh, high school and highly touted coming into the league. He's had to bust his butt, and he's had the uh, and he's had the uh, he's had to work. He's had to uh, work his tail off. Who do you got in that series, and how many? Yeah, I've got I, I've got uh, Milwaukee in probably probably six or seven. I would say, and I would probably be leaning more towards seven because uh, Toronto had not quit. What's interesting about of course, Toronto on kind of outside the lines is, you know, emotions is, they're very hard to, to hide. You know that on doing your stand up routine. I mean, you can got, have five or 10 people sitting at a table in your stand up routine and they are just going to refuse to laugh. Yeah. Right? Yep. You know those kinds. Happens every, happens and, almost every damn show. Yeah. And they just want to show you, I'm not going to laugh. Yep. You're not funny. And anyway, the, the fact is, uh, I always think about people showing their teeth. If they show their teeth, they're either going to go ahead and bite your ass, or they're going to go ahead and enjoy life. Yeah. And right now, Kawhi Leonard is not enjoying life because he he's supposed to be a Toronto guy, a Toronto native type guy, you know, because they all love him in Toronto. They do. I mean, they love him big time. Yep. And, uh... He, he, he's afraid to show that, yeah, I love you back. He really does, but at the same time, I, he, I think he wants to leave. And that's a tough way to play basketball, is to be on a team that loves you, the city loves you, but yet you want to leave them at the end. So so that's a tough gig. I don't know. I, I almost hope they win it all just for the hell of it. Just to see what he's going to do. Are you going to really leave a team that won it all? <laughs> yep. Well, I, I'll go so. deep. I'll go one deeper. I, I don't think they're going to win it all, and I, I'm not rooting for them to, to win it all. I, I will say this, though. I am out on the limb, and I, I put it out there. He doesn't leave Toronto. 
they have 50 million more reasons why he could stay in Toronto. And I just don't oh, think you that. turn down 50 million. I'm sorry, I, you don't turn down. People can talk all they want. Remember when Melo was supposed to leave New York? But everybody's yep. like, he's not leaving $32 million on the board. And Melo did not leave $32 million on the board. Right. Chris Paul didn't leave $154 million on the table with, with, with the Rockets. Like, you kid, these 50 million, 5, 10, okay, I can make that up. $50 million more than any other team Toronto can offer him. And I'm picking them to win this series in seven. And I'm picking that to be the reason why they can go to him and say, look, we got something here. You don't have to be in LA. I don't know what, but I don't know what, 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 uh, advice he's getting, but they're giving him the wrong advice. You don't have to be in these big cities anymore to make a brand and to make a whole bank load of money. You have the internet. You have social media. You can build your brand. I know he doesn't have a Nike deal, but if he wanted a Nike deal, he could have a Nike deal. He chose to have a New Balance deal. Maybe Nike's too flashy for the guy. And even my own nephew who played out here for the Lakers. Now, I didn't understand, and I didn't get it, because I love this stuff, man. I love Los Angeles. I love being able to do something on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. If I don't want to go to the Laker game, I can go to the beach. If the Rams are suck, I can go to the beach in November and December. I don't have to sit in traffic. Or I don't have to sit in my house and watch a Ram game. I can get out and go sit outside and on the water in Mona Del Rey, in, uh, in Marina Del Rey, excuse me, and, and have brunch. Like, there's options in Los Angeles, and I sometimes it's too bright. My nephew played for the Lakers for 72 games. You know what he told me? I'm thinking he's loving L.A. He told me, this is too much for me, huh? I, it's a lot, man. I don't, I don't really like. And you think, what? You don't like L.A.? You don't like this? You don't like all this attention? Everybody's not cut that way. And I think Kawhi is one of those guys. And I think a lot of times in the offseason and, and, and after the, the trade deadline, we all think we know where these guys are going. Really, LeBron was really the only call anybody got right because we kind of saw the writing on the wall for the Lakers. But nobody saw Miami coming. And nobody saw that letter to Sports Illustrated that was taking them back to uh, to Cleveland. Nobody saw Durant to Golden State. That kind of came out of nowhere. And it was like, hold on, what? Durant signed where? Like Durant's going, yeah. we think we know Paul George was guaranteed going to be a Laker. And I just honestly think, man, that Kawhi Leonard's one of those guys that if they could get to the finals, I think you can get to him and talk to him and say, look, we can do, listen, we'll, we'll buy you a condo there. Well, you can go live there in the off season, but just during the regular season, you'll be the star here. You're going to be LeBron still, even if he goes to the Clippers, you're still second to the Lakers and LeBron. It's not your town. So I'm picking them to win this series, and I'm going on a limb right now. Kawhi Leonard re-signs with the, the, Toronto, and if I'm wrong, I'll come on air, and I'll be the first to admit I'm wrong. Well, and, and you know something, the folks that are listening, you heard it right there, because, you know, VJ doesn't uh, hedge his bets. He'll stick to what he said, yep. and he'll be totally up front, 100% real all the time. Um, and boy, do I hope you're, uh, am I hoping you're right? Cause I really want that franchise to keep Kawhi Leonard. Yep. Uh, you know, they lost, uh, DeMar DeRozan and, and they've had very, very good seasons with him, but I really would love to see him stick there and then have them perhaps add another piece that's going to really take them over the top. But, uh, yeah, right now they're in good shape. You know, it's, Nothing, nothing in that in that series. Yep, nothing, nothing. And uh, so now we'll see see what happens because uh, you know sometimes it takes uh, Milwaukee a, a game to kind of get their their balance about what they're faced with. You know, one of the strategic scouting things that I would say about playing Milwaukee is, you know, big guys they get to the point where they fall in love with outside shots because mm-hmm. you know they're big guys. They're supposed to you know, pack it in and, 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 and knock down the rim. But sometimes it's not a good idea. For example, Giannis onto the Copa. He likes that three pointer. He likes to show people, listen, you, you saw me dunk a couple, two or three times down the court. I watched this three pointer. And that's what, uh, th- that's w- what, uh, Toronto needs to let him do. Hit that. Just give him that shot. He's not going to hit four in a row, so don't worry about it. No. But what what you do have to worry about is if he gets by you and he breaks you down and he's in the paint, now you've got troubles. But, uh, 
it'll be very interesting because both coaches are very good. They're well coached, both teams, and they've got very, very nice uh, uh, parts of each team to make uh, to be successful. But man, BJ, I hope you're right that he does stay there. That would be fantastic for the game of basketball. And listen, I'll go even further back about losing DeMar. Let's go back to Damon Stoudemire. Let's go back to Marcus Camby. Let's go back to Tracy McGrady and Vince Carter. Yep. It's not just yep. those guys. I can go all the way back to when Isaiah was running the team as the GM and was drafting those guys. Isaiah gets knocked for his Knicks work, but everybody everybody messes up when they go to the Knicks. But people forget in Toronto, he drafted Damon. He drafted McGrady. He drafted Vince. He drafted... uh. Marcus Camby, like he drafted guys that left there and then went on to go have really good careers in other places. Vince was a three pointer away in a game seven against the Sixers from taking them to a finals and matching up against the Lakers. So we've seen Toronto lose guy after guy. And that's one reason why I'm pulling for them to keep yeah. him, because I think they've been a great ambassador in Canada and the NBA for us. And they've been a great franchise. And who's Toronto hurt? The Raptors have hurt nobody. So, you know, there's not people walking around hating on the Raptors. or And there's not a lot of people to walking around with Raptors jackets and Raptor hats. They're kind of just a team that's there. And they've been steady. They always give us a great player and give us, and give us you know, at least a lot of heart when they're on the court. It's just something about, it's like with the Maple Leafs. You're going to get, even though they got eliminated, you're going to get some good stuff from watching the Maple Leafs. So I, I think they're the same way. They've been, they've been losing guys, man. Uh, let's flop over really quick to the uh, draft lottery last night. And I'll, I'll throw just an easy, broad question out to you, and then we'll dig deeper into it. When it was all said and done, what was the first thing that popped into your mind? First team that popped in my mind. No, first thing when you when you when you finally saw that. Oh, you know what? Fine. Yeah, take that. When they when they yeah. revealed the card that Memphis was number two, so then everybody exploded and knew that New Orleans was number one. What was the first team that popped into in the first scenario? Team and scenario that popped into your mind. I guess I would say Cleveland and John Morant because John Morant is the best player, most skilled player in the draft. Yes, hands down. He's 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 more skilled than Zion, and he's probably going to have a more of an immediate effect. He's 6'3", jumps out of the building. Of course, can handle, can shoot, can play defense. Uh, and, uh, you know, Zion isn't all of that. I mean, he's a, he, he, he was a, remember, you have to remember, at 280, 6'7", 280, and he's barely 6'7". He's more like 6'6". And three quarters, but uh, at six seven and three quarters, or six six and three quarters, he was a man among boys in in college. Now he's a man among men. Yes, that's a different yes. look. Yep. <laughs> he, yep. he, hadn't, he hadn't seen that in the talk lifetime. to him, Tom. Preach to him, Tom, because I've been saying it, but nobody wants to. I'm, I'm a Zion hater because I'm saying the same thing you're saying. Go ahead, brother. You had the floor. Preach to him, Tom. Yep. So. You know, yes, he's going to be very good, and he's going to have to learn the game. He's going to have to improve a lot of parts of his game. Whereas John Morant, even though he's going to naturally improve on all parts of his games, but he doesn't necessarily need to improve all of parts of his game right now because he's pretty damn polished. That kid is really polished. So, But Zion, he's got tools that other people don't have because you can't teach size. Uh, but you know he's, his ball handling is ah, it's average. He doesn't go uh, to the opposite hand very well, uh, but he can jump out of the gym and he does excite the crowd and so on and so forth. But that doesn't necessarily uh, mean that you've got the whole package to, to raise uh, you know uh, New Orleans all the way to uh, to number one. No way. So. There's there's a lot of work to be done there with uh, with uh, uh, Zion, uh, whereas uh, John Morant he's ready, he is ready, ready, ready. Um, of course, you know John Morant's going to Memphis, and uh, it, you know there won't be that much pressure on him at that at that place. Whereas uh, in New Orleans, Zion might be there in order to keep. Anthony Davis. Do they do they keep him with Zion? Just what your gut tells you. I'm sorry. 
Do they keep AD because they have Zion? I mean, you know, there were quick. You're 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 more connected than I am. But there were quick reports. Everything on Twitter, Bleacher Report. There was so uh, AD still was. Now we don't know who spoke to who and what's really true. But there were reports flying out immediately, which I knew was coming. I said, "Watch all these reports are gonna say, oh, I still want to get traded. I still want because." Of course, the natural reaction is, hey, maybe he doesn't want to leave now. He's got a young buck with him. But how long does it take this young buck to develop? And guys like me think that this guy is at best Blake Griffin and could obviously be as bad as a Clarence Weatherspoon or Corliss Williamson once the knee and back injury set in on Williamson. He became a two-inch jumper off the floor who could play really good defense and just be a tough guy for you. He was on the Pistons team that won in 04. I'm a Pistons fan. So I saw him up close and personal. But that's where I kind of look at Zion. Um, but if do you think that this may be able to keep AD? Or do you believe the reports uh, that AD wants out? Just just what your gut. Not who you talk to, just what your gut tells you. My gut tells me that he still wants to leave. However, uh, along with Zion, there's somebody else in the, in the mix here in regards to keeping AD uh, uh, at uh, New Orleans. And that is uh, the, uh, the new general manager of Griffin. Yeah, Griffin is a really good general manager. Yeah. yeah, he knows what he's doing much more than most. I don't know how the hell to even let him go, but Griffin is a very, very good uh, general manager, and he might have the key. He might be able to say the words to AD to keep him there. So you'll have to see. But even if they don't keep him there, I guarantee you, Griffin's going to get some people to surround Zion with to. To make it worth their while, I mean, especially when you talk about, let's say, uh, the Lakers. Okay, so the Lakers give them their number four pick. Uh-huh. And let's say they give them a, well, I guarantee you Griffin's going to go ahead and ask for, you know, uh, Kuzma and, and Brandon Ingram. So, well, well let me see. ask you this. Let me ask you, because we both talked about ball. We both like ball, especially on the defensive end. We talked about him last time on the show. I believe ball's in the deal, no matter whether it's Ingram or... Or Kuzma with the four. I believe Ball has dribbled his last basketball in a Laker uniform. I think it's either, okay, do you want Kuzma or do you want Ingram? We're going to give you the number four. I just don't. Now, you know, the you know uh, we've seen New Orleans play hard ball, and they wanted everything. Magic put up Kuzma, Ball, uh, Zubat. The pick, like he put everything up. So, and, and, and you know, New Orleans kind of giggled and everybody else did. And we see what, how, where, how that ended, where Magic is right now. But, you know, maybe the Lakers go, listen, we got the four for you now. Pick. Do you want ball? Or, I mean, do you want Kuzma? Do you want Ingram? You're not getting them both and we're throwing ball in. Do, do you, do you feel that way or, or am I kind of on, on the outside? I think ball's in the deal regardless. They, I think ball's out of LA. Well, when it comes to New Orleans, it's going to be difficult because, you know, New Orleans has got a very good point guard, Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday is an excellent point guard. And so why would they need to have Ball? Because Ball can only ever play point guard. He can't play shooting guard for sure. And, of course, he can't play a, a small forward. Okay. So, uh, okay, good. So yeah, point, point taken. The point I'm trying to make is I, 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 I can't see... Uh, New Orleans uh, salivating at the at the prospect of getting ball. <laughs> I just can't see that. Okay, that makes no that, that that makes sense. Drew Holiday is there. I just I just think he's out of there. I just really I just don't think he works. I think they're they're they they've been quiet because their dad the dad got a little quiet. And I don't have a problem with Lavar. I really don't. A lot of people do. I'm not a fan. But at the end of the day. He's a guy supporting his damn kid. There's a lot of kids out here that don't even have a damn dad around. So why am I mad at the dad that's there? That's how I always kind of looked at Yeah, it's obnoxious. Yeah, he probably said some things that he shouldn't have said to the young lady on Colin's show. And it kind of did look like it was, you know, could have been a little sexist or could have been a little threatening. I get it. In, this, uh, in the sense of the world we live in today, I'm from the I'm from the black culture. So I know what he meant, the way he was saying it. But, of course, in today's society, you have to kind of watch how you say that because if somebody responds with, are you threatening me, as she did, then automatically that's where a lot of people who already don't like you go. And I think that they want to do something a little different. I think they kind of want to get a, get away from that. And as you said, Ball can only play the point. But LeBron's the point here. I don't understand why that that's so hard for people to look at and admit. LeBron's the point. 
Like, he's the point wherever he goes. It doesn't matter if you have a point. Kyrie was the point, but there was still half the game LeBron bought the ball up. LeBron's the point. Yep. So, that's true. You know. But as, as, as the seasons go forth, you know, next season and the following season, you know, that's a tough gig for a 35 year old to do is to play the point, especially at 6'8, 275 that he is. Uh, he need, he can play the point sometime, but, or he can play point forward, but he can't play the point as true as a point, you know, bringing the ball up and then setting up the offense and so on and so forth. I think, of course, he can do that sometimes, but he's got to do less and less of that as you move forward because the guy's 35 years old here. And so it, it's going to be tough for him to do all that. So, uh, yeah, if they're going to, if they're going to go ahead and deal with somebody, they got to deal with somebody that gets a point guard back. So if uh, New Orleans is willing to go ahead and uh, give uh, the Lakers uh, Drew Holiday, I think then they would consider that. Wow. Sure. Drew Holiday and AD for Ball or Kuzma or Ball or Ingram. Or maybe they say, listen, we're giving you a point, so we actually want all three, and then we want that fourth too. So you got to part yeah. with all three of those players – and we want that fourth. And then we'll do and then I mean God, they're sitting with the one and the four. And now the four, I brought this up with my one of my uh, very smart Knicks fans, one of the few rational ones I've spoken to today. And I even <laughs> talked about the Knicks with the third, that if somehow the Knicks jumped into this and they got AD and they had to give up the third, if you're New Orleans, you have the first. We know Zion on opening night is going to be a, a Pelican. They're not trading them. The, pe- the people I see on the internet who think they're going to trade that number one pick, they're, they're ridiculous. I don't care what players for. You're going to, they're, 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 they're looking to start fresh and rebuild. They're not looking to build an already established superstar who could be on the downhill in three years or another or two years. They could pull a quad. They could pull it. I mean, hell, let's get real. We thought, everyone thought that was an Achilles to Kevin Durant a week ago. I did. That did not look like a calf to me. That looked like an Achilles. And we all got lucky, including Kevin Durant and Golden State. But that's, he's had calf is, uh, issues. And, but it is, you know, Durant is going in year 11, 12. The body starts to break down. Why would you bring that in when you have fresh, you know, supposed to be the next LeBron, highest Barkley, maybe lowest Williamson or Clarence Weatherspoon, height player, and, and, and with Zion Williamson out of Duke, you're going to bring him in. But now they either sit with the first and the third or the first and the fourth. They could turn around and then shop that pick. For two other yeah. players somewhere that we're not, Bradley Beals in Washington, Kimball Walker, maybe a sign and trade. Yeah, they have a point guard already, but you said Lonzo can only play the point. Kimball can play the two. You can slide Drew yeah. over to the two at times. Like in today's NBA, where they kind of let guards run around and do what they want, I, I think you could play those two together. You got two guys that can pass and dish, and you got two guys that can go get you 40. Along with yep. a Zion, you know, just, just, you know, just little scenarios I'm thinking of. Nick, Celtics, what other teams would you think want to jump in on this and what kind of scenarios could we be looking at? Well, definitely, definitely the Celtics because they've got some very attractive pieces, you know, in Tatum and Brown. Uh, so that, th- those two players there would be very intriguing for people to look at in regards to making multiplayer trades or even multi-team trades because, uh, uh, that might be worth uh, giving up your um, second round or third round for. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you're right. I don't think that they're going to go ahead and let uh, Zion go. Not at all. Not at all because of the fact that, uh, you know, there's been too many uh, people try to be cute with their number one draft choice and say, well, we'll just package them. And they've almost always been wrong. You know, look at what happened with KD. And look at what happened to Sam Bowie and so on and so forth. All, all these guys that uh, the, uh, some general manager thought he was going to be cute and uh, didn't draft the number one or gave up the number one. Now, you better keep that number one. And, again, I know that David Griffin, the, the, the GM of uh, the Pelicans, is going to try to make the Zion thing be the capitalist that keeps AD there. And if not then he's going to go ahead and get some people for AD that's going to go ahead and join uh, and join uh, Zion. See, the key about all these things, all these scenarios and trades, you know, uh, teams want to get healthy now. 
not three years. There's no more three or four year building uh, building uh, uh, programs anymore. People want to go ahead and have impact players that can impact their their coming season, whether it's getting not in the playoffs to the playoffs, whether it's getting to the playoffs and then deep in the playoffs, or whether it's getting deep in the playoffs or winning the whole thing. People want impact players now, not ones that they have to develop. Yeah, and, and I, I agree with you. You got guys now, because Boston does have the pieces. I think Rozier's out of there. He kind of staked his claim on uh, on network TV the other day, which I never agree. If I was an agent or a PR person, I would tell this generation, the one thing you don't do if you're an athlete is when you get eliminated, take a month off. Don't go do TV. Don't do radio. Yeah. Because it's, you're only speaking from emotion. And and really, there there may be people who like it and think, oh, yeah, we could get Rozier. But trust me, and you know this probably much more better than I do, there are some GMs that are sitting and looking at that, and they're saying, yeah, we thought about it, but that move right there, no thanks. He's not that good. And now and now yeah. we can see he's emotional. So what if something happens here? And next thing you know, we got our one of our prime guys on the biggest sports network in the world, you know, talking about his displeasure. Of his playing time. You know, like, y- y- we all saw it. You don't have to say it. <coughs> Excuse me. We all saw that they should have been playing you more. But this, yep. hey, it was a whole bad season. Chalk it up. Um, I don't like Kyrie leaving. I want Kyrie to opt in. You could be a free agent next year. And if you're a free agent next year, Kyrie, now it's not just the Knickerbockers. There's other teams you could play. There's other teams in play. Look at Miami next year. Nobody's talking about the work that Pat Riley has magically done again. And freed up all that space for next year's class. When you have some other guys that are out there and available. If you're Brandon, if you're Bradley Bill, you're going to be a free agent soon. Russ Westbrook has an opt-out year coming out. There's some other guys in the league right now that can tilt the table and tilt your franchise um, in the next few years. But like you said, nobody's into that developing. But I guess you jump in when you can jump in. But I would really like to see Boston keep that together and say, listen, it was one bad year. It took LeBron, Wade, and Bosch a year. It took Kobe and Shaq two or three years. It takes some teams a little bit. It took Jordan a minute to get over the Pistons. It took the Pistons a minute to get Joe Dumars and Isaiah to get over Burr, McHale, and Perry. It happens. One year, you can't just tuck tail and run. And if you want to leave, you could be a free agent if you want to next year. That's fine. Now, let me throw this scenario at you. I kind of know the answer already, but I just want to hear... Someone that's on the professional inside's opinion about it. I don't really like how AD handled himself. I thought it showed a weak mind that you would let kind of this. Because just a year ago, you swept Portland and everything was fine. This is the same Portland team that's in the Western Conference Finals. So just a year ago, everything was fine. I just don't think things changed that dramatically in a year unless you have somebody in your ear. And obviously, I think the ear has been... His, his agency, I won't put names out there, but I think his agency, who's attached to another mega player, has kind of been in his ear about it. Because all of a sudden you're disgruntled. All of a sudden you have this piss poor body language on the court. You have this, this, this bad body language in your face. You wear that shirt on the last day. Of the, like, that's not even you, bro. Like, we've been watching you. Somebody's in your ear. Like, we can tell, but that's fine. You're a grown man. You're allowed to make your decisions. And, but if I see it, I'm just going to kind of draw a little attention to it and call it. Is there a way that you you think that uh, the GM there can sit them down and talk to them? Is there a way that when they sit down and talk that they say, listen, we're not trading you, okay? We're not going to trade you. And if we do, we'll wait too close to the trade deadline. Now, I know the rebuttal will be, yeah, but the value goes down. I don't buy that. I don't really buy that. I don't buy the value goes down. I buy they just say, you know what? We're not trading you. And at the deadline, if you want them, you're going to have to pay big time. Or you're just going to, and now you're all going to have to compete for them next year as a free agent then. And we still might be able to re-sign them then. Do you think they take that type of hard stance maybe with AD? I think you're 1 billion percent correct. I think they're going to take, because they can afford to take that hard stand. Yep. Because he's not eligible for total free agency until the summer of 220, which is a year from now. Uh, and so they are, they, they are, they have, they are in a situation where they can, uh, be allowed to wait. And, uh, again, Griffin is very sharp. He's going to make sure that things are done right. And he, they're going to make a big effort to keep him because him and, and Zion, that, that, that's a hell of a combination, and uh, with, I mean, with Holiday, 
and and of course, yeah, holiday, of course. Uh, but uh, that I believe that AD can help accelerate Zion's game by being with him because again, Zion can play a little bit more outside, mm-hmm. and then you know, inside out types, outside type thing. Yeah, they could be very formidable. And don't and forget Julius that, Randle. You still got Julius, Julius Randle there, okay? Yeah, Julius Randle, exactly. The the the, the player that the Lakers gave away. Yeah, they, they let him walk. They let him walk. That was so crazy, and they could have gotten him for way less than what they were talking about. They could have gotten him for eight eight at that time last year, and they gave him away. Yeah, so you're right. Julius Randle is definitely right in there. Um, so. I think that Griffin has the ability to perhaps make uh, Anthony Davis see the light. But if he if somehow he fails at that, he's got these other options, which there are a multitude of options. So I think I think you've got it right on the money. I think that they have the ability to wait. Let's flip to another big conspiracy out there. I, I'm not with it at all. Uh, the Knicks thought they were you know landing Zion. I didn't think it was happening. Now you have this Kyrie and Kevin Durant thing. I honestly do think Kyrie's out, even though I've said it. I mean it. I want him to stay and work one more year in Boston. I don't want to see him in a third damn uniform in a third year. Like, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of watching this. That's why I like Dame the way I do. Dame has come out and said, if I wanted to leave, I could have left. But I'm not about that. I'm not about just jumping. I want to work here and bring it here. And maybe maybe he feels different by year 13, year 14. Fine. I was I didn't I wasn't mad at Gary Payton. I wasn't mad at Carl Malone. You're old. At that point, you should you better try to get a ring before you get out. Are you gonna be talked about? Like Stockton Malone, Barkley, you and your, Reggie Miller. You're gonna be talked about these guys. We know those players were all great, but if you want to kind of put the knife in a in a barbershop argument and one of those guys' fans, you can still look at him at the end of the day and say, Your guy doesn't have a ring. Period. I'm a Dan Marino guy. So therefore, I tread lightly in quarterback conversations and I make sure I put him at a nice 7 6 5 spot in all time QBs because I understand Brady's got six. I understand Montana's got four or five and Bradshaw's got a bunch and we, and we, Brett, uh, Aikman and, 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 uh, we, I mean, we could go Peyton Manning, we, Brett Favre. I get it. But I, I make sure I keep my guy where he kind of needs to be because at the end of the day, you just you don't have that ring. You don't have that piece. So I want Kyrie to stay there. I don't want him to jump. The other player is Durant. I'm on their fan. I'm on the side of if they win a third ring, you can't tell me the juiciness of the attraction to win four in a row yep. that hasn't been done since the 60s Celtics. You can't tell me that's not attractive. And I don't want to hear about the Clay Thompson max. You can still give Clay a max and you can still pull Durant aside. And I think that front office and Durant's been very upfront and very real with each other behind closed doors. Just my gut tells me that. My gut tells me they pulled him aside. You and I spoke about this before on my show. And they said, hey, listen. It's not up to you whether Draymond's back, but wink, wink, when they had their little scuffle. Now, these could have been ironed out by now, but we know at that time, it was a problem. At that yep. point in time, it was a problem. These could have been ironed out now, so I'm not, you know, acting like I'm in the know or I know anything. But they can go to him and say, listen, we'll give you 35 for just one more year. Let's just go for this fourth. And you know what? If you want to bounce next summer, because we got to give Clay his max, Durant. You have a two hundred million dollar Nike deal. You have all this other stuff. It's not. You're gonna get your max money. Durant can blow his knee out and still get max money in two thousand and twenty in the summertime. He can blow his knee out right now, and there'll still be a team that goes well. The ACL is different. It's a new time. Guys come back all the time. He's not a high flyer. He's a great seven foot score. So we're gonna still give him. Somebody's gonna give him max. So you're still gonna get your max. But just play one more year with us, you know, wink, wink, sign a one-year deal for 35 so we are 40, so we can give Clay his max. And if you want to roll next year, then that gives us money to free up to work on Boogie and Draymond. But let's go get this fourth together. Do I got something there, or do you think, are you personally in your gut, you think he's out, or you think this New York thing is real? No, I don't think it's real. I think you're right on the money. My God, how many times am I going to say on this show that you're right on the money? 
listen, I just thought to myself, I just thought to myself, I said, man, my fan, my listeners are going to think that I got this shit set up and that I just bring no, people on to say these things. Like, I, you know, I just honestly, no. that just came in my mind when you said I'm right on the money. I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm, I'm like Kobe in the fourth quarter today. I'm just hitting my jumpers, bro. The thing is, the thing is, listeners, what you got to know about BJ is he does his homework. He doesn't just come in and wing it. He does his homework. That's all you ask anybody that's a commentator or a professional to do is do their homework, which so many don't do. Many people don't do their homework. But VJ does his homework. He is so on top of these things. <laughs> that is fantastic. Plus, now listen, when you think about facts and figures, yeah. which, which, uh, which VJ has all in his mind, and you add intelligence to it, now you got an unbeatable situation. <laughs> so don't, 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 don't second guess the V-man because the V-man, he's done his homework. If he misspeaks, he will go and let you know, oh wait, my bad. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but which is, which is rare. Uh, maybe once every six years, I don't know. <laughs> but the thing especially, is, especially with uh, today's TV and radio is super rare. Yeah. But you, um, you're right on the money. I think that, you know, if they, especially if they win this year, yeah. the attractiveness of winning a fourth, oh, my God, you cannot leave. You cannot leave. And to go ahead and have him be paid for one year, let's say only one year contract, thirty-five, forty. man, he's not going to go ahead and fluff at that. He knows damn well he's going to get paid after that $40, year, uh, $40 million contract. Yep. I mean, because he's still relatively young. I think he's got, let's see, if he's 30, or 29 or 30, then he's got, a, let's say, a legitimate five years five. left. Yeah, five. Five strong years, and that's what the max yeah. deals are going for right now anyway. So you're going to sign yeah. a five-year max deal, and you're yeah. still going to yeah. get your money. And now, next summer, it's not just the Knicks. You could play with the Miami Heat. I mean, you can you can really look around and go, whoa, this looks, this looks, this looks prettier than it did last year. Yeah, absolutely. So... So no, you got something there because of the attractiveness of that fourth ring in a row, and uh, and even for that matter, if they don't win it this year, to win three out of four, yeah, that's still attractive too. So yeah, I know that this foregone conclusion, everybody says, oh, Kyrie and, and KD are at they're Nick after the season, they're Nick next year. I don't believe all that. I really don't believe all that. And, and if and again, uh, the front office. At Boston is very similar to the front office at uh, New Orleans now with Griffin, and that is Danny Ainge, who, by the way, I can't believe he had a heart attack. But uh, Danny Ainge uh, and that front office are going to be able to talk some sense into Kyrie and say, "Look, you know, you just got you know uh, Gordon Haywood back. He was not quite ready. We actually make it made him come back too soon, but he's going to." Be coming back with full strength, and then we got the the Brown and, and the uh, the Tatum, and uh, we're going to probably give Rozier more playing time, so on and so forth. So uh, Kyrie might be uh, coaxed into playing, uh, coming back, uh, and, and I th- definitely think KD is uh, coaxed into uh, to playing again. Coming back to, through the Warriors, even Boston, even Boston can be in play next summer for KD. Like they're not in play this summer, but next summer, because everybody's thing is, well, Kyrie and KD are really good friends. Okay, fine. So if Kyrie says, you know what, I'll stick it out one more year here. You go ahead and stay and get your fourth ring out there. We ain't winning one here. I get it. Hopefully, I'll see your ass in the finals and we'll go at it again, like we did when yep. I was in Cleveland. But yeah. I'm a child one more year. You got one more year there. And then next year, we might, I, either you could come link up with me here because then maybe Boston says, okay, let's go ahead and we're probably not going to keep Rozier and we're not going to keep Brown. We'll let them go. We got this free agent money. Yeah, now we'll go ahead and max Kevin Durant at 220, 225 because that's what it'll probably be next year, maybe 230, 240. I know the biggest one is probably going to be Kawhi. It could be like 250 on the Supermax is what Toronto yep. can offer him. Each other team can only offer him like 199 or 200 That's what the $50 million difference is. And like It's just, to me, just it's this foregone conclusion that he's gone to New York this summer. It's like, remember when Dwight Howard was foregone gone to Brooklyn and we just thought Dwight, who they end up getting? They end up getting old ass Garnett and, and Paul Pierce over the hill when they were supposed yep. to be getting Dwight Howard. 
And LeBron, yep. remember they were going to end up like I just think every summer and every May and June when the lottery comes and the draft comes, we ha- we just think we know where all these guys are going. Hell, we thought Mike Conley was out of Memphis, and next thing you know, we find out he's making thirty five million a year. He resigned, and it's like, huh? We just knew Conley was gone. Why is he staying? The money is why he stayed. He could have got uh-huh. like thirty million more. From from Memphis, and he took it. Now it was a bad professional winning decision, but it, his family is financially set for the rest of his natural life. You got to secure your future. I get it, so I don't understand why people think this changes. And I, 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 that's why I think Kawhi stays. I think Durant stays. And one last point about Durant: Who's his contemporary competition as far as greatness right now? LeBron James. How many rings does LeBron have? Three. How many rings would he have after next year if they win the next two? Four. And LeBron's not going to win anymore after that fourth. So now you have that over LeBron because I think he cares about that kind of stuff because I think yep. all real real alpha males do. Isaiah cared about beating Chicago and Jordan and beating Magic and the Lakers. Kobe cared about winning without Shaq. He said it. He said it on the interview with Shaq. When when Shaq won in Miami, he said, what'd you think? Shaq asked him, how'd you think when I won that chip in Miami? Kobe said, oh, I was furious. I was furious. Yep. I, was, I, I, well, I, I then, wanted to tear my when, house up. Yeah, I wanted to win then, without you. And then when uh, when Kobe got his fifth, he said, they asked him, well, what do you think about getting your fifth, uh, your fifth uh, ring? And he said, right into the camera. Yep. It's one more it's than Shaq. It's one more than Shaq. <laughs> as, he was set, as he was setting his daughters down at the podium for the post game, he show, he hadn't even sat down yet. He leaned over yeah. to the mic and looked at the and looked at the reporter in the camera. He said, "Up, oh, it's one more than Shaq." That's right. The That's first sure. words out is so you know. And and my thing is, why do we criticize? Like I want you don't think one day Stephen A. Right now, we all know the name. We all know the contract. Tw- Ten million a year. Ten million a year. OK, uh-huh. you don't think yep. at one point in my life, Lord willing, and my hard work and, and the, my blessings falling from heaven. You don't think that if I sign for 11 mil one day, somebody not going to ask me, VJ, how does it sound? Si- Phil, you signed 11 million a year from this network. I'd be like, damn, that was one million more than Stephen A got. Right. That's right. That's the there first thing I'm going to say. <laughs> and, and it's not a <laughs> knock at him. It's I just want to be better. I want to beat you, bro. I'm sorry. I was raised. I come from a military family. I come from an athletic family. We don't lose. We don't like losing. I want to beat you. If you're the best, then put me up against the best. Don't put me on. Don't put me on with a scrub. I'm gonna eat him yeah. up. I want to do your show. I want to come to the big networks. I can do this. Don't don't put me over here with this. Don't put me on the college campus. I'll eat these kids up. They're kids. I got kids yeah. their age. They can't mess with me on the mic. But that's not cocky or air. That's just, and I think that Durant cares about that kind of stuff. And I think that, like, it's not just the the four in a row. It's like, first of all, LeBron never three peated. So I'm now with Kobe, Shaq, Jordan, and the Celtics teams. I'm now with those guys. I got a three peat. Nobody's won four since the Celtics. So now I did something, Kobe, Shaq. And Jordan and they three peats couldn't do. They couldn't win a fourth in a row. I did that. Now I got I'm tied with Shaq. I'm one below Duncan. I got two one below Kobe. I got more than LeBron. You guys can't deny me. I just think that I, why would you turn all that down? And I think Durant's the kind of guy that cares about that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think a lot of these guys who've made this super money, the you know, the, the mega money that they do care about their legacy and what's going on. And, and, and another thing about a guy like um, KD, you know, he's a really good person. He's a good human being. Yeah. And he, uh, he, you never hear about him carousing and being out at night and DUI and domestic violence. Yeah, that, that's just not him because he cares about his image. Uh, some of these guys could give a damn about because they feel like they can pay their way their, their, themselves out of every uh, situation. But, uh, yeah, it's important for these guys who already make mega bucks to go ahead and really leave something that somebody else can't touch. Let so me you're right about that. Let me throw this one at you, too, and I know I got you for maybe about 10 more minutes here. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the draft board. I'm going to just throw a few teams at you because something strikes me with Conley in Memphis. And I know, and I know, I know Moran or Moran, how you pronounce his name. That kid is the best, as you said earlier. He's the best prospect in this draft by far. In my opinion, it's not even close. He's Russell Westbrook, but I think he doesn't have Russell Westbrook's 
uh, personality and attitude. So I think he may actually fare better with media and fans where I feel like Westbrook takes kind of what I call the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar kind of attack from the media and the fans because he doesn't kiss their ass. So when you don't kiss their ass, instead of them saying, well, you know what, that's just who he is. We are, some of us are kind of jerks. They kind of hold that against you. And I think they've done that to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's why I've dubbed that. I mean, he's, he's probably the greatest player ever. How the hell isn't he more beloved than he is? I get it. It's because he didn't placate to the media. And he did, in the 70s, side with um, uh, the, the black rights activist group of Ali and Jim Brown and, and uh, Bill Russell and those guys. So I think that turned some of the non-supporters of that era of the media off also too i think that's got a lot to do with it but i look at memphis and this this conley thing is so easy for everybody goes oh they're gonna move move conley they're gonna move conley uh shout out to my guy shay at sage alvarez which is one of my followers on twitter and one of the fans of the shows he posted that he's got two years and 66 million still left on on the books there now it sounds good to trade him but if you're another team you got to think okay if we're not ready to win the championship like right this second Conley coming in, who has been often injured, he had a career year at 21.6. So it isn't like he's even up there as far as scoring. We got guys in the league dropping 36 a night. He's at 21. I don't look at that as like your franchise leader. But then you got to think about $66 million to him and that you could still lose him in a year or two because he can opt out after next year. So this 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 thing that, you know, they're going to move him so they can make the number two pick with, with more more. You've got more in sliding all the way down to Cleveland at five. I think the Knicks would be dumb as hell to pass them up at three. But talk to me about this Conley thing where everybody kind of feels like this trade is a done deal. But when you look at his, his contract, he's got two years and $66 million still left on it. Memphis and Conley at number two. Yeah, that's uh, you're so right about that. Uh, that $66 million is looming large. And, you know, he's not a rook anymore. He's not a young player anymore. Conley's not. Uh, he's definitely effective. He's definitely a very good player. But it, it, with the kind of talent that Morant has, uh, he, he has the ability to easily slide over to the two. And he could go ahead and rotate from two to one to one to two, two to one, uh, because he's got that kind of ability. So, no, they're not going to go ahead and let him go because nobody wants him, not at $66 million. If if it was if it was less than that, they might take a shot at him. Or if he was available to a team that was a real good point guard away from winning it all, they could possibly do something. But um, most of the winning teams have very good point guards right now. Okay, so uh, no, I, I don't see him moving. Uh, not at six six million dollars. That's for sure. That's for doggone sure. So. Uh, yeah, I think, and, and, and I think Morant and, um, and Connie can play together. When you look at the, yeah, I mean, you're up and close and personal with these guys. You, you train a lot of them. You see a lot of them going into the draft process. Give, give me, give me a player to whoever you want to throw out there that no one's talking about that when you watch, you just go, if he gets with the right team, he's going to, he's going to pass all these guys that you guys are following. Like, for instance, if I, if I can, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a few guys that I know everybody loves. I just don't like. Zion's the first one. I'm with you. I, I see, listen, I see as high of a ceiling as Barkley, but damn it, Barkley, it was a beast. And I don't, you know, I know people see him now as this, honestly, this former overweight player on TV who likes to call people on the internet, people watching the game who don't agree with him, idiots. And he gets paid a lot of money and he throws it in people's face. And, and you know, he's, he's got a, the worst golf swing we've ever seen in the history of golf. And, <laughs> And, you know, he, he's Barkley. But in his playing day, he was nothing to be messed with. He stepped That's to right. everybody, and not a lot of people wanted to step to him. It just It's just what the man, I, I'm not bragging about it, but the man did throw a fan through a glass window at a bar. Okay? Let, let's, let's remember who Charles Barkley was. Yep. Like, he was something to deal with, man, in an era where you could foul hard, where guys fought. Where, you know, refs let guys run their mouth and talk. It wasn't this, this PG era and this buddy buddy dap everybody else era. And so, so that's high praise for Barkley. And I think if Zion lost weight, number one, he's got to lose weight. I don't care what nobody says. 280. Sorry, bro. That's not all muscle. I'm a human being. I know it's 6'6. Six, six, you know, you're right. He's not 6'7. Six, 6'6 six, six and 280. There's some belly in there, bro. And I get it. I got some belly too. And, but I'm not an NBA player. <laughs> 
I got belly too, but I'm not an NBA player. You are. So that's got to come down. He's got to come down to about 260, 255, and that's got to happen in the first year or two. That can't be a gradual thing. That's got to happen now because he's so explosive. He jumps so hard. Every move is at a 10. And I'm, I just know the human body, sooner or later, the knee, the ankle, the Achilles, something's going to go. We saw with Blake Griffin. Jumped out of the air for three years or two years, however long he was at Oklahoma. And as soon as he got to the league, one of those big jumps, there goes the knee, rookie year. Two years later, there goes the knee again. Another year later, there goes the back. Another year later, there goes the quad. Now he's up in Detroit. Plays all year long and gets to the last damn game of the regular season. Hurts the knee again. Misses the first playoff games, the first two or three playoff games. And then does the whole play with guts and blah, 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 blah. Doesn't matter. My Pistons still got swept. So Zion's the first guy I look at, and I go, uh, I know you guys love hype, and networks do a great job in making you guys think that everybody every year is going to be a superstar, and we see more times than not that that's not the case. Number two, R.J. Barrett, and I'm not picking on Duke. I'm just calling these guys out because I like Cam Reddish. Cam Reddish had to take a third backseat to those two guys because R.J. doesn't know how to pass and because Zion was the man, so I get it. But I honestly think Cam Reddish is the best pro out of those three guys. We didn't get to see it at Duke because of the two reasons that I just named. But R.J. Barrett, no right hand at all. No right hand at all. And I know we said, oh, he can develop it. He can develop it. But we thought Markel Folks is going to develop a jumper. We keep saying Ben Simmons is going to develop a jumper. We kept thinking that uh, uh, Blake Griffin, there's a, the guy that he would develop something other than his game than just lobs and dunks and running starts for dunk putbacks. And he's become like an average three point shooter and a guy who can't even really jump the way he used to him. Or like every year we think that these guys, oh, they can, they can, they can develop. They can, and it just doesn't happen. But it's not easy. If you haven't been playing with a right hand or a left hand your whole life, you just don't come to the NBA and develop a solid and productive pro level offhand. It doesn't happen. So those are the two names that I look at. I like Moore, I like Reddish, I like Culver. Any guys out there you look at that no one's really talking or naming about that you say, if this guy gets on the right team, he's slipping through the cracks and he's going to be a really good pro. Yeah, the, the number one guy that comes to my mind is Rio Hachimori. Uh, oh, uh, Gonzaga. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. He, this guy is something else. He's 6'8 and an appropriate 240. So you see, <laughs> we're not talking about a guy that's overweight. This guy's 6'8, 240. He goes after the ball very hard. He's got a lot of finesse in his game. He passes well. And at Brooklyn, that is the right team for this guy. Wow. This guy is going to flourish in Brooklyn. So, yeah, Ryu, uh, Ru, Rui Hachimura from Gonzaga. Yeah, no, so I, I like that kid. I Oh, man, that's a good one. See, that's why I like having the professionals on because you teach Internet dopes like me, uh, the guys that we should be talking about in a different way look at the game. They're at 17, and you know what? I like that pick for them. And I tell you this, if he shows his tail at the pre-draft camp, Somebody else might jump because I'm I like I'm looking at Washington at eight, Atlanta. I mean Washington at nine. They're sandwiched between Atlanta at eight and ten. Atlanta pick is from Dallas for the uh, for for the Trey Young deal and the Luca deal. Minnesota. I don't know if he. You know what are you going to do with Wiggins there? Cat Cat looks like he might want to try to test free agency in a year or two. Miami. Maybe you get him in at thirteen, groom him early. So when you bring in your big free agents next summer, which we know they are. Now you got this young piece that you already groomed for a year. He doesn't have to be a star, but I'm with you. Passes well, plays defense. He has a great mid-range game. Attacks the hoop well. Like no, no, you're right. That great name, man. Um, what do you think of What do you think about uh, 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 Culver Culver out of Texas Tech? Culver or Culver? Am I saying it wrong? No, Culver. Cole, Culver. What do you, yeah, what do you Culver, think? What yeah. do you think? Of, so I, I hear everyone I've asked. They're like, you know, you get 50-50 answers. What, what do you think about him on a pro level? Well, you know, I, I, without a doubt, with uh, some more experience and and some uh, games under his belt, he's going to be a uh, he's going to be a very legitimate pro. Could possibly be an all star, but we'll we'll hold off on the all star thing right now. Right now, he just has to learn to be a pro. But uh, yeah, he's he's legitimate in regards to uh, uh, making a name for himself because you know the guy showed it in in the NCAA, uh, NCAA playoffs. He showed it so. Yeah, he's, he's a guy that definitely has a future. 
as long as he continues to develop. A lot of people need to develop, just like, uh, you know, uh, the kid at, uh, at Brooklyn, um, D'Angelo Russell, he finally developed. Yep. And, uh, and perhaps, uh, he just needed to get out from, uh, from underneath, uh, the Lakers. But, uh, yeah, he definitely has a, uh, that was a childish, a, yeah, that, that was a childish team he was on. I, I listen, I'm a guy, yeah. you're a guy. He broke guy code. We know that. You don't, mm-hmm. you don't record mm-hmm. a guy, especially a teammate. Who's in a relationship saying something about some other woman? He was. You don't listen. You don't do that. That's guy code. Yeah, but well, that's, you know, but that's let, also let a stupid nineteen-year-old mistake. Right. But let me just say this, VJ, before I have to go here. No problem. And that is, in regards to his his misstep there, you know, with Swaggy P. Uh, he, as far as I'm concerned, he couldn't have done it to a better guy. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but but anyway, uh, in regards to that misstep. You know, you take Golden State, you take the Warriors with, I mean, not, not, the, not Golden State, Golden State, you take the Lakers from, uh, Jerry Buss era, you take the Knicks from way back when, you take the Detroit Pistons, um, um, when they were winning, that wouldn't happen in their locker room because nope. they wouldn't allow it. No. Nope. And, and, and D'Angelo Russell would know, I can't do that here. But he didn't know. He didn't know that at the Lakers. No. Nah. Well, it was a young. It was a childish team. It was an immature team. Kobe was hurt. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, you're gonna get things like that that happen when you got a lot of money and young minds and young egos and maturity levels at where it was. But I, I thought they, they, I thought they dumped on that way too early. And he's showing, yep. and he's letting them know every chance he hits a game winner, he's pointing to the veins, man. And he tried to That's tell right. us here in LA, I got ice in these veins. But if you go back, take that out of it. Just go back and watch him as a freshman at Ohio State. He carried that team, and you can yep. see the stardom in him. Like, nah, this guy, this kid's ready, man. Like, this kid's pro ready. This kid's gonna be just fine on the next level. Once you get around a certain locker room, once you get around a certain front office. And, yep. and, you know, I, I think that you could calm things down. I thought they did it with Marcus Smart in Boston. I think Andrew, I think Danny sat him down one-on-one one day and said, look, man, you can either be like Gilbert Arenas, okay, or you could be a Rick Fox kind of guy. You right. could be a guy that's going to be on some good teams and championship teams and play 15 years in this league, man, and still be able to kind of be yourself. Or you could be Gilbert Arenas and think the world revolves around you and do all this crazy stuff on the side. And the next thing you know, you'll be sitting on a couch talking on Fox Sports 1 about what your career was and how depressed you were. And I'm not saying that wasn't the the case, but to sit and watch that interview. And I watched it because I used to like Gilbert Arenas. But it's like, bro, you did this to yourself. Don't 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 sit here and try to talk yep. about how much you love the game and blah blah. You you were trying to live up to an image because you had a bunch of money and you were young and immature. Just say it was that, and we can all move on. Everybody's that have to have an excuse for doing young dumb shit. Sometimes you yep. can just say I was just young and dumb. Listen, I know you got a roll. We got one minute. Tell everybody where they can catch you, Tom. And I appreciate you, brother. Yep. Uh, listen, I appreciate being on the show. And and again, guys. <laughs> When you want to hear quality stuff, you got to listen to VJ's show every time. VJ's got the deal. You can catch a hold of me at hoopcitynews.com. Uh, I've got articles about the playoffs. I've got article, articles about the draft. Uh, I've got articles about, uh, you know, everything you want in NBA basketball, college basketball, and even uh, European basketball. And uh, as you know, last uh, two years, two and a half years ago, I wrote about uh, – uh, look at Doncic, and look what has happened. Yep, it's yep. You Doncic. called it, bro. Like yep. I, I love that about you. Did I, I? I went back and I told you I read a bunch of your stuff on the website and just pulled a bunch of stuff up. You called that, man. Like yep. and no, ain't nobody yep. called that. Nobody can say, "Oh, I knew." No, you didn't, because that's why we also are surprised and we all love him so much now. It's because we didn't see it coming. And uh, nah, you were on. You were on top of that one, man. That you were definitely on top of that. I, I definitely yeah. uh, got to give you your props on that one, Mister Tom. There. I appreciate the listen. Hope to uh, be uh, on again soon. In the meantime, you guys keep listening to VJ. He's got the word, and it's right, and he does his homework. Thank you. I appreciate you, man. God bless. Enjoy the the pre-draft stuff, and enjoy the game tonight, partner. Okay. I'm out. I'll see you. Great stuff, man. My man Tom Perkins there from Hoop City. 
Facebook.com. Uh, a professional. I told you, I try to bring you guys all different levels. We have a little goofy. We have a little opinion. We have a little conspiracy. But I always make sure I bring you guys somebody professional from the inside that can kind of uh, open up our eyes a little better. And uh, listen, I'm a, I'm a big fan of being able to change my opinion when I'm exposed to new information. So that's why I like having a professional opinion on. I feel how I feel about the NBA. I feel how I feel about the NBA draft lottery. But at the end of the day, there are some real things going on in the backgrounds that I don't know that other people connected to. And that's why I have them as my sources and I bring them on so that you guys can see I try to bring you guys all uh, sides of the story. I will stand on a few points before I wrap up the show. Kyrie, stay your ass in Boston. You only got one more year if you want to leave next year or you can even re-sign up with Boston or you and Durant can talk because Durant, I need you to stay and go to stay up there all win this year. Stop shifting around. Kawhi, get up there. Stay up there, bro. Come into LA. You, this isn't your town. I'm, I'm, I'm being honest. This isn't a Kawhi Leonard town. It's not going to be your town, especially if you put on the Clipper uniform. This is a Laker town. This is a Dodger town. This is a SC town. This is not a Clipper town. I don't give a damn. They had Chris Paul and they had Blake Griffin, guys. I was living here. It was still not even close to being a Clipper town. It is a clown franchise, and I'm not calling them clown, but it is. That's the way they looked at here. You got a guy named Clipper Darrell who's a fan who's known to be a diehard fan for a losing franchise. You know why there's not a Laker Darrell or a Laker Sean? Because banners speak more than your team-driven suits. And your colors and you yelling at every day. I sat right behind him in one game. God, he's so loud. I said, excuse me, he sat behind me. He's so loud. All he does is yell. You can hear him from other sections. Yeah, some funny, quirky stuff comes out. But for the most part, it's like, dude, shut up and sit down, bro. You're yelling and you're a Clipper fan. You got a Clipper suit on. It's the Clippers. That's like the Browns. Can you name two worst franchises in all of sports? The Cleveland Browns. The Los Angeles Clippers. You're in a better situation, Kawhi. And why would you come out here and want to battle Houston? Dallas is up to, is up and coming. Sacramento's up and coming. Denver's up and coming. Utah's up and coming. Portland's here. And Golden State's here. Why would you want to come battle all of this? You can stay in the East like LeBron did and kind of have it a little easy in the first and second round, especially if you get another player up there. I want to see guys kind of stay where, just stay for a little bit, guys. Damn, can we, there's a new damn, now there's a point they come out with a new 2K every year because there's 14 different stars on different teams every damn year. It used to be like, man, they don't have to come out with a game every year. The rosters don't change that much. Just change the attributes. You can change, you can download now. Now they need a new damn 2K every year because 45 players change teams. Every damn year, 10 stars. Stay where you guys are for one year. And then next year, you got teams like the Heat that can get into it. You got OKC that can get into it. You have some other teams that can jump into the fray. If 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 Durant leaves Golden State, you don't think Golden State's going to look at other free agent names? You got the Spurs that can jump into it. Everybody stay put for one year. Just one year. Everybody stay put. And then next season, you got Kyrie, you got KD, you got AD, you got Russ, you got Bradley Bill. That's a real free. Now we can have some fun. Now free agency can be really, really fun. Don't you all agree to that? Come on. Let's give this a run one more year. Let's run with these squads we got now. And then we'll see what, what, what's up next summer. Two, 2020, we got an election. Next year, we got a presidential election next year coming up. 2020. Let's, 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 yeah, look, can we do it like that? Let's do it like that. Everybody stay put one more year and then we'll see what's up. LeBron play with the young bucks one more year. What's one more year gonna hurt? It ain't gonna hurt nothing. You ain't out here for the Lakers. You're out here for Hollywood and that's fine. I like Hollywood. I'm making my attempt to join Hollywood. So I'm not mad at you for that. But, I mean, y'all work with the young buckaroos, little young Thundercats, little whippersnappers one more year. And then next summer, 2020, let's have a big We got a World Cup next summer. There's a World Cup. Is there Olympics next summer? It's the, 20, it's the Winter Games, right? You got the Winter Games next, next year. You had a presidential election next year. Like, we got some real cool stuff next year, 2020. So let's add that up. Let's, let's do that. Let's wait one more year. And that's why I stand with that. I feel how I feel about the draft lottery. I didn't want to touch on it a little too much conspiracy-wise, but, I mean, New Orleans at number one. 
The Lakers jump all the way up to number four. You slide the Knicks in at number three. You kind of penalize Atlanta because they got two picks, so you put them at eight and ten. Boston, you push out. Miami, we'll hook you up. You get hooked up next year, so we can't we can't put y'all up high. Charlotte, you know you're Charlotte. You're really a Panthers town anyway, more than a more than a. Uh, a Hornets town, so, you know, it is what it is, so, great show, I want to thank my man Jermaine Snap Thurston, I want to thank my man Yao G's, and I want to thank Tom Perkins for joining the show today, great stuff today, I'm not sure when I'll catch y'all, but when I do catch y'all, make sure you pull out your mitts and pull, flop your shades down, because I'm always hitting pop flies coming right at you, baby, and I want to make sure you catch them, man, VJ Vernon Husky, the Big Vanilla Funny, this is VJ's Unsportsmanlike like Conduct, Spreaker.com, don't forget to follow me on uh, Instagram, at the Big Vanilla Funny, Funny. Follow me on uh, Twitter at, at Vessin Sports, V E S N Sports. I'm attempting to start my own sports network like Diddy Did Revolt. My mom always told me if he can do it, if anybody can do any of this stuff they're doing out there, if I put in the hard work, then I can do the same thing too. They're no better than me. Everything, Everybody's got the same 24 hours in a day. So whenever I decide to jump on air, follow me on my social medias. Guys, really follow me on my HDTV and on my Twitter. Uh, I want to kind of move away from Facebook a little more and more towards uh, posting where you get a little more action and you get a little more communication and back and forth going with my Twitter and my Instagram. So once again, Instagram, the big vanilla funny, the big vanilla funny and on my Twitter at Vessen Sports. Enjoy the game tonight. I like Toronto in the upset in seven. I think Kawhi is more prime than Giannis is right now. And, you know, Giannis to me is like Jokic. They're really, really good. And we like them a lot. But you, you're just not there yet. You're not ready yet. Your, your team's not there and not ready. And I think that's Milwaukee. I think the veteran team is the Raptors. And I think they win this series in seven. Um, I like Golden State in five or six. I don't think this goes long. I don't think they have enough firepower. Portland, that is, have enough firepower. Um, I love Dame and I, and I love McCullough. But they, they just don't have enough. This is a championship team. These guys are already uh, three-time, three-time champ, four-time champ, three-time champions. Yeah, three-time uh, champions. They're going to end up being four-time champions with Durant getting his third in the next year. They're going to get their fifth. Durant's going to get their fourth if they all decide to stay. That's my prediction right there. And last but not least, Chris Paul, James Harden, like get off of it, guys. They're not champions. They 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 don't want it. Sorry. They may want it, but they don't. They just don't have the games. And Chris Paul, wow, he is still owed $124 million by Houston. That's a mess down there, and it's only going to get worse. I hope you guys like watching James Harden circumvent the game and flop and score a lot for you because that's all you're about to have, man. God bless. I love you guys, and always remember, man, if, you, if, if you're going to do it, <laughs> make sure you're doing good and make sure you're good. Got it. Shabbat, wang, bang. I have no idea what I just tried to do right there. Don't worry about it. I was trying to reference Martin, but I messed it all up. But that's okay. Players mess up too. I'll holler at y'all, man. God bless.